If he was melted down, he couldn't be poured into a fight. All right, so we are recording. This is session five of East Texas University. I think so. We're a little, late, little later than usual to start. We had our seven-year anniversary, anniversary of gaming together. Yay, us. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> hey, at, least, at least we don't have any D&D injuries to report. <laughs> Stop kidding yourself, Gilbert. That was a very good move. Oh, no. Uh, Josh, according to my notes, session five was the last episode. This is session six. All right. Session even better. Yeah. So just to recap... Um, you guys have gone down to Mexico to examine the um, to ruins they found. You had a run-in with some sort of creatures and a witch. You managed to uh, escape with your lives and came back. You recovered a um, crystal skull as part of that event, your confrontation. And um, before you left, Edison went about trying to grab whatever empirical evidence he could to show what was found. He was very minimal success on that. Um, Joe Diffie did acquire a gun. He's got seven bullets for it, but it's Texas. You can buy more bullets on a street corner. Hmm. Legally. <laughs> <laughs> you can buy more guns on a street corner, actually. Um, you can do that as well. The, you did recover the quill that was shot at Joe Diffie. For whatever reason, that didn't break down. And... Uh, Edison did take the charcoal rubs requested by Glenn Mack. Um, I did put down the skull is smaller, like a softball size. It's not a, the actual size of a human skull. Or an alien skull. Or an alien skull. And as you got back, what are you showing you? Um, so, when you got back, Glenn Mack asked you guys to come to lunch the next day to uh, debrief on what had happened. In uh, the long drive back, Edison reviews the camera footage of the creatures on the phone. He's looking for any way to detect demons in a camera or a photograph. Are there any unusual results that show up when demons inhabiting a person are recorded on camera? I, I don't remember you telling me you were taking pictures when action was going on. But at the same time... We can go to the videotape. We can go to the audio tape. But at the same time, I'll give you the benefit of the doubt. <laughs> um, why don't you give me either an investigation... Give me an investigation role. Okay. He actually did tell you because I told him he was freaking crazy for doing it. <laughs> oh, that's right. Yeah, you yelled at me. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I have a D6 in investigation and a plus two. You think four dresses on the cruise? Uh, seven. Seven. So it needs four dresses? Um, you're able to see... Um, <laughs> it was funny to me. You know how when you, you look through the camera, you can see um, so IR comes out as... as uh, if you looked at an I, at a, a remote, you could see the IR when you looked through a camera. A yeah, camera. only the front facing cameras though. It's yes. On the iPhone. Whatever. Um, their eyes appear that way. In oh, pictures. so you got a little bit of a flashy eye effect going yes. on. Yes. Only okay. you you're, you're reviewing video, and it's only when it looks directly at you too. Okay. So you, you know. It's very very quick. Yes. You have to freeze frame it, and you might catch it for a second if you're yes. very quick. Okay. Um, and the other question was, Edison proposed that we review that book on rituals and see what we can make of it. Yeah, Juan Lowitz said he was going to bring that to Glenn Mack. Oh, to Glenn Mack. I got it right here. And last but not least, uh, guys, Tabitha is dead, and so are a few other people, and I think we need to go to the authorities and alert the police. I mean, there's roommates out there who are waiting to get A pluses. I think we should call the police tonight. They're dead. Their parents need to know. They got friends and family, brothers and sisters. Uh, I believe I stayed at the university said they would take care of notifying everybody. Oh. Okay. Uh, the exact. I don't want to make those calls. The exact quote was, "There was a bus accident." Why are you gonna lie? Why don't you tell them the truth? I'm just telling you what the, the what the professor who brought you back was told. He just related to you. I wouldn't want my parents thinking that I died in a bus accident when I got mauled to death by a creature of the devil. I mean, my God. Think, think about what you just said. <laughs> <laughs> really, no. There's other people who could be at risk. If they just think it was a bus accident, then some other kid's going to get killed. But if they know the root cause, then they can stay away from it. Think about what you just said. 
<laughs> I don't think it helps anybody to keep this a secret. I agree with you, but think about what you just said. Why is this not going away? You're trying to hide the taskbar. Yes. Yeah. Why don't you move the taskbar to the top of the screen? Why don't I like, unlock it? And All right. We'll keep you guys sort of picture there. All right. So, um, you guys get home. And you all, turn, you know, you go back to your room, you get cleaned up, you turn in, and you all have the horrible nightmare night again, like you have been having. She's she showing you a dog, Bob? She is. Oh. Oh, they're in Texas. Ooh. We'll have to talk about this one. That's a good one. In Texas? Please yeah. tell me you're not looking at that husky. Well, the, the husky looks like a devil creature, doesn't it? The huskies <laughs> are devil creatures. <laughs> husky almost killed my dog last. Uh... Are you serious? Uh, we'll tell that story in a little while. Okay. <laughs> sorry, we got distracted. No, it's all right. Um, so you guys turn in, and it's back to having the horrible nightmares you were having, um, being chased through the roost. You know, Coach, your grandma's uh, uh, voodoo wore off. <laughs> we get her back. Uh... And uh, I think you gave us more details of that dream. Do you want to read that dream? Uh, to, you sent it via email. Yeah, I gotta look it up. Uh, if I have it on mine, I'll pass it over to you. Yeah, here you go. I got it. I got it. Uh, all right. You know the chaser and even feel betrayed by them. You have something. They have something you want, but you feel an overwhelming need to protect it, to keep it out of the pursuer's hands. You run through the roofs in the dark. It's night and the lights are off. You're racing through the hallways underneath the stands, getting turned around and mixed up in the dark. Your heart is pounding in your chest. You're breathing labored, but you have to keep running. You can't let them catch you. So... That's a meta, but don't trust Bob. <laughs> Are you all having the same dream? About running under the rafters, under the stadium? Lost in the hallway? hallway? You're all having Yes. <clears throat> At the I think roost? maybe we should go check the roost, though. But, uh, are they rebuilding it? The, ro the roost is under con demolition, construction, whatever you want to call it. Destruction. I'll tell you, it, that dream almost feels like it's a omen or a foreshadow. Like it's something that might happen to us in the future, and we're just getting glimpses of it. Do you have that same impression? Actually, it's more like you're seeing something in the past through the person's eyes. Uh, oh. Okay. Like you're, you're inhabiting their body. Uh, oh. you got to find a mirror. Well, we're having the dream. In what? the dream. The mirror in the dream? I know who, who it's it is. It's not any time to look at your hair. By the way, Johnny Moon, your hair is perfect. That's why all the women <laughs> like you. No, right. Joe Diffie's hair is perfect. Oh, Joe Diffie's yeah. hair is perfect. Yeah, that's a good <laughs> Except for today, he's so tired, three strands are out of place. <laughs> are you feeling all right there, Joe Diffie? You got three hairs out of place. Yeah, today's been a little rough day. I didn't get a lot of sleep last night. Whew. Do we, do we think there's something at the roost? It's worth checking out. Well, I think we're pretty sure there was something at the roost. I think we should go check it out maybe like late at night in the dark one time. I was thinking just in case it was a sign of the future, we could go to the roost and then we could put weapons like in the walls every 10 feet. And then if we find ourselves yeah, chased there, yeah. we just reach into a wall, we take out a gun, and we turn around and we lay down flame on whoever's chasing us. <laughs> and burn down the roost again. Well, yeah. <laughs> right now we have a grand total of one gun. Yes. Which I, I don't think Joe Diffie should have that gun. It seems like a good idea to take a gun across uh, international borders. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, how did he get past the border guard? That was very impressive. Joe Diffie, how did you get past customs with that weapon? Get past customs with what? Wow. <laughs> he is good. Look at that. Plausible deniability right there. That is something. Our neighbor's husky got loose. They One of those things in the house. Like a French-American restaurant. Uh, ran in the woods. Yeah. Yeah. I actually helped look Guess a better word for a little bit with them. Uh, so about two or three hours later, we're just finishing dinner, sitting out on our back deck, nice night. I bring some stuff in. All of a sudden, I hear mayhem. I go out. This husky has Molly, our big dog, our bigger dog, in its mouth. 
off the ground. My wife is holding it, hitting it in the head, trying to uh, get it to let, get it go. let go. Other dogs are, go are going crazy, kids crying. Oh my gosh. I take the corner. And my see what's going on. <laughs> what's that? I take the corner. Yep. I see what's going on. And I rush it and go, bam, right on its forehead. And that, like, startled it. It dropped our dog. Good job, man. I was able to, to take it and go off our deck, up towards the neighbors. They were already coming down because they heard. Who's, whose dog was it? Did you find out whose dog it was? It was the neighbor's dog. Oh, you knew the dog. It was the neighbors who complained. About your dog? About our kids being on their property, liability, and that kind of stuff. Uh, mm. And, like, our dogs pooped in their yard a couple times. So it's, we're even now. Yeah. Your dog almost killed ours. Yep. For our, our kids coming across your driveway to play with the kids next door. That does not sound quite even to me. No? No. But you no. did get to get to bash the dog in the head. I did. Yeah. I always wondered why people, like, I don't know. It seems I didn't like, even think about, like, I don't know if it's on TV or something. Like, I always feel like people get attacked I'll by dogs. Job. I was just trying to get away from it, like, hold their leg away. She was trying to hit the damn thing. <laughs> Apparently that doesn't always work unless uh, they get that rage yeah, and they're yeah. like immune to being. If it was either of our two other dogs, they'd be dead. That's yeah. a big one of the little. Wow. This one's just big and. And how is Molly? Does Molly one, one says one hundred inside. She's like, she like a big, like was bleeding. Like you know, I've lost. Uh, uh, she's fine now. I'm glad yeah, she's okay two. now. One. That's a hell of a story. I know that's the hard one. Scared. I hope not all huskies are like that. I should say one hundred. You know what? It's like. It yeah, probably came easier. into our property. Here's our dogs start to go nuts. Oh, bark, bark, bark. Yeah. Hey, good day. It doesn't know if it's going to get attacked. So it goes into the back. Uh, your shot. Maybe. That's still know. a very generous interpretation on your part. I've known several people with huskies. They're typically, the ones that I've heard of are playfully destructive. Yeah. Really. Like chewing furniture and kind of stuff. I'll tell oh, Andrew that she really has her heart set on some kind of husky. They are not inside dogs at all. They're beautiful. They're, yeah, they're, they're very outside. Yeah. Yeah. But it doesn't yeah, and you don't have an outside kind of. <laughs> well, I work from home, so I can take it on tons of walks, and I plan on running with it if I can train it to, to run, run at your me. pace. What's that? To run at your pace. Well, <laughs> if, if it can train me to run at its pace, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Seven minute mile. <laughs> 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 all right, now Red. Good night, guys. Good, Good night, Amy. Good night. Good night. Good night. Sorry. Oh, we're getting stood up. Oh, there it is. Most animals don't have our stamina. Really? Yeah. Yeah, that's why we. That's how we're hunters. We we chase. Hmm. Uh, they, we chase them. They get ahead of us. They get tired. We catch them. Yeah. Interesting. Well, I think that's uh, how they think. Like we used to chase deer and that kind of stuff. Was we can run for miles and miles and miles. They overheat. They basically pass out. Huh. We can go. Except then, those deers that survive breed with other deers that have the ability to run for longer distances, and pretty soon <laughs> the deer are outpacing us. And then the next thing you know, the deer are turning around and turning AK-47s on us. But then those people After who were able to catch play. those fast deer, they're the ones who reproduce, oh. so we get faster and faster, too. That's so true. Uh, That's so true. You've got me. This time, Darwin. <laughs> All right. So you have an appointment at 10 o'clock with Glenn Mack. It does not conflict with anybody's schedule. Oh, right. Yeah. Actually, 11 o'clock because he says he's going to feed you. Oh, yeah. Good. I need to burn our pizza. <laughs> <laughs> it's midterms this week. You're going to burn the pizza at the end of the week. Yeah. <laughs> Guys, I don't know about you, but I'm, I'm real sure stressed out. Joe Dippy's probably going to burn something else. Trying to get you know to the bottom of this Mayan affair getting ourselves almost killed, getting out of Mexico, and on top of that, I've got computer science exams for computer science, Fortran, Pascal, and mechanical engineering one. Do they still teach Fortran and Pascal? It's a foundation. It is a foundation. <laughs> it's a second generation language. you got to learn it. Well, it's not learning ADA. I took a class in Pascal. Mm -hmm. Did you? Do you know how much of that I remember? <laughs> you know how, uh, do you know how to spell Pascal? Zero, zero, one? I think the, book, one, zero, the one? book's cover was red. <laughs> yeah, that, that's what I meant. Mean. All righty. I think I remember the name of the professor. What was the professor's name? This is Kelpos. Oh, wow. And I asked how to go all my class. I would say yes. And, you know, I didn't go too well. Oh. <laughs> that sounds like it. So you, you, you get to Glenn Mack's office. He's waiting for you. Jackson Green is there. 
and uh, he's, you know, guys, please tell me what happened. Tell me the truth, not what the university is saying. We tell him what happened last week. Gee, Mac, <laughs> it was some bad shit went down, man. Bad shit. Did you know, sir, that all of this was going to happen? I mean, we went to the ruins. We thought we were just going to do some charcoal etchings and maybe get a tattoo. And then what we ended up finding was devil dogs and a witch and creepy people at a convenience store who only sold Pepsi. They didn't have Coca-Cola products. I, I thought they might get you to drink tequila with the worm or the scorpion in it. Yeah. But that was, I, and to get some charcoal rubbings, I didn't expect any of this, this hell dog you're talking. Tell me, tell me more about it. What did it look like? We really should have. We got the hell dog, man. There was a witch. A witch? Did we? Sure that wasn't your wife? It was the, the stone that kept the... After what I heard, I don't think she wants to be that anymore. <laughs> what did Jeff? Why didn't we close the stone? <laughs> to seal back up the You didn't. Tomb. <laughs> no. I'll, I'll give you credit for closing that up at the end. Uh, when okay. you got That's out. really nice of you. After, after, after you, well, because Bob went back and took all the pictures and everything. So, yeah. yeah Edison would have been that thorough. I think he would have been. Yeah. Well, I don't know how you describe these things. They were... Uh, Mean and thorny. They look like a porcupine had sex with uh, that dog from Ghostbusters. Not number two, but number one. It had spikes everywhere. It looked mean. And they were, like, vicious. But Johnny Moon did all right. He took out a couple of them. But then there was that witch. The witch was something uh, uh, else. Johnny Moon took out a couple of them? Uh, sorry. Juan Lo. Juan Lo <laughs> took out, like, all of them. It was crazy. But Johnny Moon did all right with the Molotov cocktail. That was pretty good scene, right? But then, the worst thing is that there's people dead. Like, they were infected. They were, like, possessed. They weren't even possessed real Possessed by people. what? The like, witch. Yeah. The witch had him under the spell. Really? Was there any way you... I, he, he wants every detail you could give him. Well, check here. I took video, and here's a picture of them. They look like regular people. But hang on, hang on. If I pause right here... Oh, too fast. Let me go back. <laughs> right, right here, you see their eyes? Yes. Look, look at... There's Juan Lo. He's in the frame. His eyes are normal. Now look at, at Tabitha and the other two that were with her and the other professor. See that? All their eyes are like glow. It's like a deer in headlights. You see that? That is crazy. I know. And then they changed form. and I don't know. They looked pretty horrible. Like made a shadow or something. It was really? bad. We almost... Wings? I don't, yeah. I don't remember seeing wings. Yes. They had wings? Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Like you said, wings. I don't know. All right, so I, I have to ask the question now, because I am aware that some of you may engage in recreational pharmaceutical activities. <laughs> I was still cold sober. I wasn't talking about sober. I, I was, yeah. We, all, we had our wits about us. Really? We, we, Joe Diffie didn't have time to smoke up. Really, Joe? <laughs> yeah, typically, Doc, g -Mac, this was no joke, man. You know, right after we had those mushrooms for dinner? I couldn't admit to you, <laughs> you know, weaker, but I'm telling you right now, this is the realest stuff I've ever seen. The video camera did not take any... Is he coming any, out of there, or is he coming out of the I took laptop? pictures of the corpses of the dogs, and we also have that here. weird... We have one quill from one of the dogs. So we present the quill. We found this on one of the dogs. Does that look like anything you've ever seen before? Really? I have, uh... Oh. You, may I? Yeah, of course. And he's looking at it, and he's, he's very gentle with it. You know, it's almost like, a, like, he's, like he's handling it, uh, an archaeological artifact. And he goes, how did, how did you guys get this? Did it fall off one? Did you pull it off of one? Yep. Do you guys remember? Didn't it get it, shot at It us? shot at Mikey. It shot at Joe Diffie. Oh, that's it's, right. Yeah. Joe Diffie, do you remember how we got that? They shot this thing at me. Really? It was one of their quills that they shot at me from within their body. I'm telling you, G-Mac, this stuff is the craziest stuff I've ever seen. Look, you know Joe Diffie's a skeptic of our group, and if he's saying that, then it had to have Wow. I got pictures of the corpses of the dogs right here, although they they decompose very quickly. I can only get sort of the outline. They turn almost dust. Yeah. Really? You saved some of the dust, right? I do. I have samples of the dust if you want it. I don't know what I'm gonna, what I would do with the dust because I just, could just be, you know, 
dust, sand at that point. Uh, we Quill I'd like to hold on to, though, if you don't mind. You're running through a GC. A, a gas uh, chromatograph. Run right through a uh, atomic analyzer. Check out the moon. That's a good good point. We, we could burn a bit. I'll take it over to the chemistry department. Check out the caloric intake. <laughs> How many calories does one of these dogs give us when you eat it? We use x-ray diffraction. Spec we can put it under a spectrogram. Or it could just be dirt. Yeah. It'll tell us. We won't know until we test it. I will I will I I will get it analyzed for us. Great. So Oh, and also we found this. He presents the crystal skull. Really? That's a very intriguing item. Yeah, I know. It was a terrible, terrible movie. Don't watch it. I haven't seen it. But this was... May this I? Was, yeah, of course. We probably should have taken it out of Mexico. <laughs> <laughs> so he's what, looking what, at what, it. What skull? Uh, it glows for a second for him. Ooh. Whoa. He's an alien. Oh, wait. I've never seen that happen before. What did you do? This is a focal point for ritual. Now, you guys all think magic is not real, but after what you've seen, maybe you're ready to accept that there are magic. There, there is the ability to create magical forces. Well, we did have a witch fly after us world. who, uh, who made, uh, Joe Diffie, Joe, no, uh, uh, Edison scream in pain without touching, just by putting her finger. So, and she made blood come out of Joe's eyes and somebody else's eyes and ears. Just went, ah, and they started bleeding. Yeah, man. I don't know. It's, it's not right. It's not so, okay. God, it's not, God didn't put it here, but I've seen it happen. What about the roost? What happened there? And place got hot and burnt out. You got burned. That Somebody came up and touched you right on your arm. Yeah, the, look, I, I, uh, the roost is so frustrating for me right now. Numerous workers have been quitting and running off, not coming back because of the, the students seeing ghosts, and the university will not let us in there to do any kind of analysis or anything like that. It's so frustrating because I think that we're some, you know, we're close to seeing something. Uh, you know, Professor Mack, I don't know if this is the right time, given the death of our fellow students and all, but uh, we've all been having dreams of the roost. Uh, we've been uh, seeing... Very realistic, uh, but the same kind of dream. Yeah. It's really. It's like... Uh, it's a yeah. shared experience kind of dream? Or it's sort of. Like we, we, it's like, we, it's like uh, somebody's chasing us. Like when I have the dream by myself... And somebody's chasing me, but I'm not me. I'm somebody else, and somebody's chasing me, and they're trying to get something that I have, and I need to get away. And everybody have the same dream. We're not there together, together sure. but we all that the same dream. Interesting. The guy Interesting. I'm gonna do some. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna do some research. I'm gonna talk to some of the, the, the psych guys I know. See if they have a, a name for this kind of experience. This kind of. It feels like it feels like it's something that already happened. Like something like we're living through somebody else's memory. All right. Do you know any history of the roost? Did anybody get chased and killed there? Or disappear? Uh, I haven't done much research into the roost itself. I know, you know, there's been so many mysterious occurrences on campus, it's hard to quantify them all. What made you bring your uh, heat detection units into the roost that time that we were there at the beginning of the semester then? What prompted you to decide to investigate during the inauguration of the freshman class. We, we were actually testing to see if uh, a large group of people acting in a, in a socially erratic way would generate any kind of uh, uh, ghostly or spectral. Um. Oh, all right. Are you, gonna, are you trying to tell me that socially erratic means sexually aroused, Emac? I, I was gonna I was gonna go with uh, socially irresponsible. Which would imply sex, well, drugs, and rock and roll. All of well, which that's that's innocent to a T. He's socially irresponsible. Did you find anything? <laughs> well, we found the hot spots that we all saw. Right. Ultimately, we didn't find anything else besides that. But, uh, Professor Mack, I think there's something more concerning. We have three fellow students who were dead and a member of the faculty, and now they're going to go on and tell, them, tell their parents and family and loved ones that it was a bus accident? That's not right. 
right or wrong that is what the university has chosen to do. It's beyond our hand is out of our hands to get involved in that. What can't we call the cops? I mean the university ain't the cops. University Hey, and it's happened in Mexico. What do you think is going to happen? Look, we got to call law enforcement. We got to call fire and CIA and the FBI. We got to get the president's special Edison, forces Edison, in here. Edison, Edison, listen to your. Let, let's pretend you're you from two months ago, August. Yeah. Okay. And better yet, pretend you're your parents. Okay. Right. And a man comes and knocks on your door and says, "Your son was killed by a couple of hell beasts and a demon." And a witch while in Mexico. What are your parents going to say? Well, my father would sniff. And my mother would say, he's such a disappointment. And uh, that just goes to show he's living up to his potential. And that guy, I never thought Edison would live up to anything anyways. And if you have remnants of the body, we're really not interested in burying him on the family plot. So you can just keep it. And uh, his older brother was much, much better. So G Mac, I, I, I could I couldn't agree more with his mother. <laughs> hey, that's not right, Joe Diffie. I thought you were my friend. That's what I think they would say. Edison, do you know that the Mexican government doesn't give a damn about anything, let alone especially the when you, Especially when the university is very happy to give them a nice check to hush everything up. I drove, I'm sure they even drove a bus off the cliff and filled them with corpses. Why would they do that? That's ridiculous. A good bus. That's even more ridiculous than Did telling them the it? truth. Did you see a bus that was not a good bus. <laughs> I just don't understand. Like, okay, let's say your next door neighbor has a dog. It's a cute dog, but it's rat. It's like a full-on cujo, all right. And you have kids in your house. Do you tell those kids don't go across the street because there's a mystical fairy and the fairy is unhappy, or do you say don't go off the street? Because there's a pollution spill and it could hurt you, or do you just say, "Don't go across the street because there is a wild rabbit dog and it's gonna rip your lungs out"? G Mac, do you know why I smoke the reefer now? <laughs> I, mean, I was gonna ask you for a hit soon. <laughs> I, I think sometimes to protect your kids, you gotta tell them the truth, even if you don't like the truth. I do, but your kids believe in dogs and have experience with dogs. They don't have it with fairies Hell you, even if that's the truth but the nature of human knowledge and science is at one point in human history we had no knowledge of anything and then as we learned we gained knowledge we don't ignore scientific facts I remember, I remember, I remember from high facts. school and science constantly well it depends on how and it's there. there is nothing that's a fact yet just FYI I remember, I remember in high school we learned about the scientific method so, can you prove your claims with the scientific method? Yeah, I got videotape right here, flashy eyes. Okay, Edison, once again, I'm going to use logic here. <laughs> Try to follow me. <laughs> would, it, would, a, would a parent, child, parent who has a normal relationship with their child, accept the fact that their child was possessed by a demon and killed by another student, or be much happier and have much more closure if the student was killed in a bus accident. Okay, I agree with you there. Why do you want to switch on? That conversation is over. Thank you. Let's not tell the parents. But what about <laughs> FBI? Let's talk to the people who are specialists who know about this stuff. Edison, if you talk to the FBI, I'm just gonna say Boxer Boulder. What's Sorry, that, right? Joe Diffie? They're gonna lock you up, Edison. You're gonna be crazier than batshit oh, for those people. They're gonna lock you up. They're going to hook electrodes up to your chesticles, and they're going to do nasty things to you. All we need is like a Jump, jump Street 21. We need 21 Jump Street to come to this university and then just live here as a student for one month, and then they'll be believing us. What's the L.A. police? Oh, wait. What? 21 Jump Street 21? What's that? 21 Jump Street. It's that old show from the 1980s. Is that new movie that came out? It's that new movie yeah. that came out. <laughs> It's not that new because it came out with 22 Jump Street, too. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> oh, my, my parents wouldn't let me see that movie. Sure, sure. Both pretty funny. Are they really? I saw, I saw the one on the plane. What is it, number 22? Okay. All right, Why so... Why are they taking old, old, old problems and making them comments? All right, fine. Okay, but if I find proof... If you, had more, if you had more substantial proof, I would be happy to entertain the first possible... other possibilities. 
He's still so, shooting down, but he doesn't take it. I'll, tell you, I'll give you one fact that you cannot dispute. Those three students and that one professor are dead, sir. That is true. And yeah. we can prevent that by letting more people know. That's how I feel. But I not, understand We cannot prevent that in any way because those people are dead. Uh, <laughs> we can prevent more people from dying. You know what I mean, John and Moon. All right. What, 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 what's that book you have there? Oh, uh, it's just a book I got in, in town at the, at, the, at the coffee shop. Wait, no, Monlo, that's your Sudoku book. I think he's talking about the ritual book. <laughs> oh, this book. I got, yeah, I got this in town at the, at the bookstore. Uh, the bookstore uh, coffee shop place. Ah. She said it's, uh, it's a book of, of, uh, of rituals. I, I look through it. It don't look like no rituals to me. I don't see any... Any uh, uh, bones or uh, skin or fat all wrapped up in sacrament and burned and offered to God, nothing like that. So Mary, no Maryland, water, Maryland, no Maryland, Maryland picked you out, huh, son? No water, no wine, I see, no, no bread, no nothing in here. Maryland picked you out. She is something. <laughs> That's good, man. <laughs> <laughs> hey, see? Oh, here you go. Take a look. Thank you. He's got all of our stuff. Right. <laughs> if Professor Mack right now said, is that your wallet over there? Can I see? <laughs> is, that, is that a $50 bill over there? Can I see? <laughs> We're very trusted with Professor Mack. Interesting. Uh, There's a. Where's your free pizza? He, he, he's, meant, he's, 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 he's meant to be a mentor for you guys. A, a I, I resource stuff. Just go to the top. Um, so there's actually uh, two complete rituals and a half and an incomplete ritual in here. Wow. What does it say? The first ritual will imbue uh, uh, an item with light for a, a period of time. Make it glow in the dark, or glow, or produce light. Like a flashlight? Like a flashlight, but without batteries. Really? Or a light bulb. So you're saying that we could use this ritual to invoke a power that is undefined by science itself, so that I can prove to people that magic exists, so that they know the three people who died were, de were killed by magical sources. I'll tell you what. You guys come back tonight when it's dark out, because they were it's easier at, at, at dark for me to show you these things. And we'll talk about how hard it is to prove this works. You can bring all your equipment you want. You, you, you ever see them couple people on TV? I saw, I saw what he caused the Statue of Liberty to disappear. Oh, wait, I'm sorry, i got to update myself a little. You ever see uh, Chris Angel on TV? Chris Angel, mind freak? <laughs> yeah, he freaks me out. But it's all it's all tricks. It's all tricks with cameras and angles and stuff like that. Everybody gonna say it's just the same thing then. Well, then we, we oh you know what we can do? Oh my god. We could go to Vegas and, and put on a show. No, even better, even better. We, if we're able to produce light on demand with a ritual, have you ever read about Amazing Randy? He sets a foundation. A million dollars. A million dollars if you can demonstrate proof of the supernatural and he will allow a team of his investigators to show it. If you are able to produce light at will without a power source, we can take a million dollars. Professor Matt, can you imagine what you could do with a million dollar grant? <laughs> this is fantastic. Let's go. Let's let's get it working. You, you think you know how to work it. Let's try it. I, I have been involved in a few rituals in the past. So I'm happy to attempt this one with you guys this evening. Okay. If you don't mind, I'd like to use the skull as a focal point because it does... The skull is the first plus one on your ritual wall. Oh, cool. All right, sure. What are the other, what's the other one and a half, do you think? Uh, the second one actually might be even more interesting to you than the light one. It uh, allows you to see the whole of something. So, like, you have this quill. We could utilize the quill to see what it came from. Or if we had a treasure map. Oh, my God. And if we had a half a treasure but map. But it will destroy the quill in the process. If I had a torn dollar bill, then I could see the entire dollar bill. But then only see. Take a picture of it. But then I could take a. Then you have a picture of a dollar bill. Can you can you take a picture can you, can you of the image picture? that is a bill? It's a dollar bill. No. You can try it, but I don't think it'll work. You're you're thinking you're remembering back to when Johnny Lewis's grandmother shared what he had seen. The, oh yeah 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 yeah. Okay. Johnny Lewis's grandmother showed you. What Johnny Lynn saw when he saw that the neither. You're you're envisioning something along those lines, except you have to have something from 
whatever you want to see. Oh my gosh, can you imagine? We can go to the Library of Congress. We can take like the Dead Sea Scrolls, and then we can use this, and we can find the pieces and the pages that are missing. We could go to the Vatican. There's parts of the Bible, they say, that have been locked up for years that are impartially because they were destroyed. We can use this. We can see what the rest of the Bible says. This is crazy. But you need the original. Well, yeah, and, it's, and it's destroyed in the process. Oh, but if there's a copy that's destroyed, then we can see the parts of the copy, make the copy whole. You need the original. Wait, all right, so let me just make sure I'm understanding. You can clearly see Edison as a mechanical engineer. <laughs> <laughs> so let's say that John and Moon... Really, Bob had guessed. <laughs> John and Moon writes a love letter. I look at his love letter, and I copy it word for word. Now, the original love letter is burnt up because of the heat of his love and the power of his devotion to his girlfriend, but the copy remains. Now, the copy, I tear in half, and I get rid of the other half. Now I have the copy that I wrote. We use this ritual on my copy... We see the other half of that piece of paper. You see the other half of that copy, but you All don't right. see the original. Well, then, of a bunch of monks are copying the Bible century over century, and this is the fifth copy of a fifth copy of a fifth copy, and that is the one that we have in its partial. So let's play the telephone game, too, and see how much it changes. Oh, wait, we've already... Be careful talking about the Bible with Juan Lowe right here. I think he's going <laughs> to... He might take offense at that comment. All right, so... Oh, I love the application of this stuff. This <laughs> Let's go get ourselves a million dollars. Josh is suddenly going to realize this ritual just doesn't want to work for us. <laughs> How can we put these two rituals together in the worst possible combination? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you said there was another uh, half a ritual? Yes. Uh, I don't know what it does. Well, can't you use the second ritual to find out the rest of the third ritual? Wait. <laughs> yes, but he'll destroy that, ritual, that third ritual. There's, the this is a book? And in the whole book, there's two and a half rituals? It's a very thick book. It's about as big as Jewish sports heroes. <laughs> <laughs> well, yes, it's Hank Green for Sammy Goldfax. I was just pulling a right line through. from an airplane. I, I think... I think. Right through. Yeah, got one. Uh, so this... this I don't think it's it's Peru. Which one do you, you which, which one do you guys want to see? The light or the... The light? Or the... What, whatever. Oh, I think I, the I light can, one would be a relatively easier... Yeah. Yeah, I, I'll need... Uh, why not do both? I don't understand why there's a choice here. Because it's physically taxing it for Oh. Can I don't we, care if you get tired. Can <laughs> we do this as well, or is it only Jewish. you that can do it? Uh, green, uh, you have to be shown how to do a ritual. Yeah. Through, like, well, when, once you've been a, uh, participated in a ritual, what? from the you can, you, can, you, can, you can have your ritual. So how do these rituals originate? I knew you are thinking of this. <laughs> Dude, I'm just playing the rules. <laughs> well then, guys, maybe we should use the quail so uh, Professor Mac can see what those dogs look like. That that might be a better idea. <clears throat> you don't need the quill for nothing else anyway, right? So well, let's do I think he's going to run some tests on the quill. See if there's like poison well, or Well, we break like it in that. half, and we can use half for testing and use the other half for our ritual. Right? What, what if we the could... ritual brings one of those things back? Rituals, the ritual is only designed to show you what it looks like. That is it. We could scrape, just take like the the tiniest sliver, right? <laughs> and like do the ritual on that piece. piece. Yes. So we still have the quill intact. I think that's a great idea, John and Moon. John and Moon, <laughs> what are you studying? You're studying geology, is that right? No, uh, <clears throat> a little bit of farming. Have you, you, have you considered a career in what mechanical is, engineering? Putting animal research? husbandry, he wants All to right, be. You guys, want, you guys want to see this ritual? Maybe chemistry? As a quick side note, Bob. Johnny, Johnny Moon studying animal, animal husbandry. He likes the cows. <laughs> see, do, you guys want, do you guys want to see this? Sure. Wait, Adam has one I was just, No, it's, it's, I don't know if anybody else will find it interesting. There's another skeptic organization that has like a $50,000 reward for someone similar test as the JRUP. That gets you get more like participants and hits than the chamber because <laughs> nobody believes that he's got a million dollars, even though he has it in escrow and like chose people. People just like don't believe that he'll actually pay it. <laughs> Very interesting. And he's the skeptic. So yeah. he takes the quill and he snaps it in half. Okay. okay. Be careful. I need now to we have to make I... sure that we have the half that was also connected to the beast, and not the half that's just connected to the only other half. There oh, that's very clever. Huh? That's very clever. Otherwise, it's just going to show us a whole quilt. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's see. I, I got a part of the creature. I need something that, that, that an image would be stored on. 
like a piece of film or a slide or a canvas? Like at home? Can we tattoo it on Edison's chin? Do you want it to work chin? when we're done? Yeah. Then no, you want it to Okay, that's a phone. <clears throat> Can we find a sheet? Maybe. Wait, how? We're going to find paper. <laughs> Actually, this is? That might be a legitimate question. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. So you, you, you have see, something in your office? He sends Jackson that? Green out to the, 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 the network copier on, uh, printer out in the hall when he comes back. And then he says, uh, Wait a minute, wait a minute. If we, if we take the pieces of paper together and make a big, like a big... Like, go to the architecture school and get some of their, like, Heavy three by four. Yeah. It, 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 doesn't, it doesn't show up on, this, on it. That's consumed as part of the ritual. Oh, okay. And then I need a lens. Ooh. He pulls, he goes back to his desk, he pulls out, he has a broken pair of glasses. Oh. He takes the lens out of that. And he, uh... That's incredibly fortuitous. Thank you, sir. <laughs> hey, you know... I'm all about that. <laughs> so, uh, everybody gather around and he closes the shades. Uh, uh, sir, you know the Code of Student Conduct forbids any inappropriate touching between students and professors. <laughs> I just want you to know that. you got to sit next to Joe Diffie. All right. I like Joe Diffie. He's a good guy. But it's okay if Joe Diffie touched you inappropriately. Exactly. Well, he's, not, he's, not fact, he's, not, he's not a faculty. <laughs> I love how Adam, Adam and Jeff like, just kind of fall out of the picture. There you go, Matt. Can I change the picture for you? <laughs> I'm always in the picture. I you are, because you're in the middle. I can sit on the other side of the room and I'd be in the picture. <laughs> Wait, I'm going to I'm gonna videotape this, just in case we can catch anything. That could be proof. It's a good proof idea. Proof of uh, supernatural. Good luck with that. I don't expect it to work. Look, play. Good luck with that. I don't expect it to work. No, it's working just fine, see? <laughs> <laughs> For those of you who wish your cell phones to work after this, please come put them over here in my drawer. <laughs> Wait, it's going to break the phone? You're going to find out. Is I'm going to put my phone in the drawer. Faraday cage. Faraday, yeah. I put, as I put my phone in his drawer, I hand him a little, uh, little, little package on the side and say, this might help you deal with Edison later. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Well, it's still under the one-year warranty. I can get a replace for anything, <laughs> except water damage. All right. So he uh, he explains the ritual as he goes, so that you guys have an understanding <clears throat> of how this works. Once this is complete, um, anybody is able to take a ritual edge and power associated with it. Interesting. Okay. okay. So, and I'll give you the parts of the rule book if you care about it that much. Uh, so he, take, he takes the pieces and he takes out um, a mortar and pestle. And he starts breaking up the quill and he tears a little paper into there and he crushes the lens up in there. And he starts, you actually start to feel almost a little, little electricity in the air. And he starts reading through the ritual, chanting. Do you feel this, guys? Hey, Edison, Edison, did you bring the eye of Newt and the wing of bat? <laughs> I, I didn't. I hope we don't need it. That's not the right... That's for a different ritual, Mikey. Do you guys feel like now, like it's the middle of winter and you're walking on shag carpeting for like five minutes? I think the hairs on my arm are standing up. It's, it's the most unusual feeling. Chill. Heat. Chill. Heat. It's almost like there's a vortex of, of, of hot and cold spinning through the room. Pages on books are starting to, to, to pull off. Air, wind is starting to occur. Well, books off shelves from 30 feet away. No, nope, no, no, no. There's only level one spell. We're mm -hmm. not scared of the sock from a librarian. Maybe second level two spell. <laughs> Symmetrical stacking of books, no. <laughs> <laughs> so the, the lights actually dim. Uh, you hear a pop from the light bulb in the corner that goes out. Your cell phone goes out. Oh my gosh, you realize if this works, we've also identified a miniature EMP pulse. You know the applications, the practical applications of that? This is incredible. And then, just as the, your, every hair on your, on your arm and your body feels that like it's straining off, it's, it's almost like there's somebody scratching electricity all over you. You know what there's a pop. all the lights went off? And now we're not going to be able to see this stupid <laughs> picture that we all, that we did this ritual for. Yeah. Yeah. You we think... drew the curtains, 
Our light bulb went off. You think Mac would, would light up some candles or something in anticipation of all the lights? They blow out because of the wind. He's, don't worry, he's got like a drawer that's got like 57 light bulbs in it for this. Maybe the LEDs. Maybe the LEDs will. Maybe the LEDs. So, the Is it ritual, ritual completes. Mm -hmm. The energy goes out. Then they light the candles for the new bucket. Uh, okay. And almost like a three-dimensional hologram hovering over the, the, the bowl for the mortar pestle. You think G-Mac would undo the lap bulbs before starting the ritual so he saves on bulbs? That's really, you imagine the cost to ETU for the lap bulb budget in the course of the year? That's horrible. It doesn't always work like this. Oh, all right. There's, there's a hologram above the, the thing. I believe we just lost a lap bulb. <laughs> About the size of a large medicine ball, the old old school medicine balls. Ooh, okay. Big leather ones. Yes, is the, the creature that you saw. Finally, this would be your best chance to get your only chance. To, you know, the mm. best view of it you've got. Is the holographic view of this creature sort of slowly rotating or moving at all, or no. is it fixed in place? Just fixed. And it looks pretty accurate. To, to the best of your knowledge, it is spot on. Professor, that's it. That's it right there. Really? Is this one male or female? <laughs> that that's so 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 surreal. Witchcraft or devil work, man. What you do? I don't. I, oh, that's not right. I can't you can't you can't do that, man. I just did it. No. You just did it. You gotta believe it. Yeah, you know I, I, don't, don't don't do that again. And now you know how to do it. No, I don't. I don't know how to do nothing. Yes, You're, you do. You get a lens. You get a piece of paper. And we crush no, it. No, 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 no. This this did not come from God. This is the work of the devil. No, that's no. That's, no. that's a actually that's that was the work of the that, that, that's, that's those are dark rituals. We'll talk about that in a few minutes. What? There's worse than this. One well, load. This, 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 this is not from God. It is from God. No, it is not. God did not make this. Nowhere in the Bible is there talk. Are you saying God didn't make that creature? Or are you saying God didn't let us show you the picture? Both. God definitely did not make that 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 thing. Well, well no, the I, heck out of it. It's science, maybe. I'm sure there's a scientific <coughs> principle or theory that explains this. It's not from God, because we all know God don't exist. No offense. But I think what we've got here is just science that hasn't been discovered yet. And Edison, I thought, well, how can you say that? <laughs> what? God does not exist? What's the matter with you blaspheme just like that? No, no, no offense to him. I'm sure he would take offense if he did exist, but since he doesn't, there is no offense. You did it again! Why did you just do blaspheme against God? No, look. There's... What's the matter with you? No, nothing. What's the matter? Look, there's a demon creature in front of us. An hologram. We're arguing about this. Conjure up by sorcery and I, devil magic. Actually, I think this is probably a, a classic chupacabra. I don't think it's a, a demon dog. We well, made a chupacabra. How cool is that, guys? <laughs> it's a chupacabra. Just like a breakfast. You're a diver, right? Chupa Piggy, how about me? What's that? He was saying that he had, he still had his Badaya uh, beer. Maybe, maybe he has it. Yeah. You gave me one, I gave it to him. Except for this shirt, it says, you know, funky chupacabra, I think he's supposed to be drunk or something. Nice. Very cool. But there's also, that was in Puerto Rico in 1990. 96? 95. Probably not many of those t shirts left in the world. And there was a uh, Medaya. 96. Medaya, uh, that's like the Puerto Rican beer. Sure. Medaya Ultra. Ultra. When I was still drinking beer, buying Medaya and drinking out of the beach at 10 a.m. in the morning. So that's nice. <laughs> so that sounds fantastic. So, so. How long does the picture stay here for, sir? The, well, the picture would normally be gone years. by now. The. the Skulls allow me to maintain a picture a little longer. Do you know if more traditional film top cameras would be able to capture photos from these displays? Or less? My, my guess would be not, or we would have seen them already. Oh. <laughs> Is anybody in the group really good at drawing? I, I can draw, but I, I have nothing to do with this. I don't have a skill for drawing. Joe Deppie has stick figure. <laughs> I, I'm going to say that my, my drawing skills are, are decent, being a, that I'm an architecture major. Oh, you're an architecture major. But I'm not drawing them. Well, well there's sketching. <laughs> you're sketching a building, and then there's drawing. I, I, I know. It's not quite the same thing. I don't think I'd be as good as like a bio major. Yeah. But I can draw decently. He touches the skull. The skull. But it's not going to come into play. Gives, and the image disappears. All right. So where did the power come from that created this effect? It come from the devil. You saw it. From the spirit world. What? All right. What, what is consider, that? Consider it a gift from an angel. An angel's a spirit. 
angels are, are, are messengers of God and they deliver his messages and his wrath. And they don't deliver they don't deliver messages in the form of pictures of devil dogs like that. Why 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 they, they, why, is they that not, why is that not God showing us the picture of, of a creature we should be feared? Because there ain't nothing like that in the Bible. The Bible doesn't doesn't match doesn't doesn't oh boy. There's, there's probably something like that in the Bible. Probably. Well there's no yeah. platypus in the Bible either. You're picking nets. Well, you, know, you, know uh, you know those two worms that live at the very bottom depths of the ocean and they only survive from the carbon dioxide that's emitted by volcanoes that are at the very <laughs> base of the core of the earth? Like the Bible didn't talk about that either. Well, that's because they didn't need to go on the ark because they're sea creatures. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Betty for that one. <laughs> Let's that. turn up there with the blue whale comment. That is an excellent point. <laughs> <laughs> correct. Very, very good point. So you want church on Sunday? <laughs> yeah, what day is this? I forgot to ask. I was starting session with what day is this? Professor Mech, how long have you had the ability to do things like this? How long have it's, you? It's not. It's not often. It's, it's very. It's very, for me, physically debilitating. So I don't do it very often. I know people, I have heard of people who do it more consistently and are better at it. I do not have the skill or the focus or the concentration to do it well. How long have you known about supernatural things like this? Why do you think I, I am where I am? I don't know. Did something because happen? Because this, this is, for lack of a better this term, is a this is a nexus of, of, of activity. That's why I'm here and, okay. and Jackson Green is here. We've both been attracted to want to learn more, and this is a place where a lot of activity happens. What is your history, sir? Did you... Uh, experience this sort of thing as a child? Uh, Sorry, a student. Yeah, I'll tell you, you know what? I'm not ready to tell you that story yet. All right. I understand. I respect that. Give me a little more time. We're still getting to know each other a little bit. Is it because it's a rip yet or because it's because you're holding We all know which one that is. That's my prerogative. <laughs> well, then, Professor well, Mack, if you're able to produce such wonders as this, why have you yourself not gone public? With this amazing display of what appears Who's to be. Who's going to believe it? Well, uh, don't you think people have tried? You're telling me that if we didn't have a newspaper reporter in here right now and you demonstrated just what you showed us, you would have a believer quite quickly, I think. And then I'd end up in the National Enquirer. Well, then you quack. just reproduce it again and again on demand, and eventually some mainstream press is going to follow. People have tried. There's only so much magic in the world, and there's only so much belief in it from people. You guys have been exposed to it enough now that you recognize it for what it is, magic. Definitely. Most people wouldn't. They, do, they think it is a, a Sir, trick. I flatly reject that hypothesis, because people invent the fact that teeth fall out of little kids' heads, and then there's a fairy that comes around and collects it, and we have a global conspiracy that every child whoa, believes. You don't, whoa, 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 hold on a second. Are you trying to tell me that... There isn't somebody that comes around and collects those teeth? Joe, Joe Diffie? Uh, I don't know how to break this to you, Joe. Uh, it's, it, when your teeth falls Hold out on. of your... Are you going to tell me Santa Claus isn't real either? Uh, well, Joe Diffie? Uh, yeah. Well, actually, the Tooth Fairy was, 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 did exist until about uh, 150 years ago. What? Then there was an incident, an incursion... I got nothing else to say about that. I think you're going to say dinosaurs don't exist either. Hey, whoa, 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 wait a minute. <laughs> it's just crazy talking now. <laughs> or aliens. Well, you know, there are people who say that, that God put dinosaur bones on the earth to trick us. It's true. <laughs> so, but here's the thing. If everybody can believe in Santa Claus and everybody can believe in the Tooth Fairy, there's plenty of belief in the world. If you can convince a bunch of people to believe that, then this, you'll have no problem convincing people. Right. As a child, I was taken to see David Copperfield perform a show. He made the Statue of Liberty disappear. Mm. I know he couldn't do it. I saw that on YouTube. You, you didn't know he didn't do it. It still disappeared. People accept it for what it is. They won't. Believe me, other people have tried to go public with magic. It has not gone well. Don't you think, though, that even if 90% don't believe and you get 10% that do believe, then that's 10% that can build on the next generation. Yes, but don't you think of those 10%, over half of them are going to be looking for their own personal gain and power in it? 
But that's every problem. Great every power mechanic. comes great responsibility. But that's the problem with every field of study you, in the university, right? If people become a mechanical engineer. Sometimes they want to build things that will help others, but 90% of them want to make a nice living, right? That's the problem with anything. That's not a reason not to do it. <laughs> you got your friend there, Bob? I think I have a friend here. Yeah. He's looking for I'm something. learning the oil business for environmental purposes. Trout, are you really? Or else can you find oil without the environment? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know you were such a kind hearted soul there, Trout. Learn how to dig it out of the, the ground. So we can how to break out of the ground. The underground problems. Find some use for it. <laughs> He's a fracking guy. <laughs> fracking trout. <laughs> All right, gentlemen, I have a, a, a class I have to go teach shortly. I, would, I do want to continue this conversation with you. I am returning your ritual book. I, I, that's not my book anymore. I don't want nothing to do with that book. I ain't taking it. Anybody? I'll take it. Sure. All right. I will, if it's okay with you, I'll take your quill to get analyzed. Yeah, my, by all means, of course. I'll return the skull to you. Wow. All right. Unless you want me to hold on to it. I think it's good if you hold on to it. Yeah. Yeah. All right. That might be for the best. I'll keep, oh, and here's everybody's phones back. Oh, thank you. I turn my phone on to make sure it works. Works just fine. Oh, Edison wow. tries to turn his phone on. Nothing. He, he hits it a couple of times. He takes the battery out. He recedes it. Oh, so it's not an iPhone. No, no. <laughs> it's a Samsung Galaxy S. Okay. Factory reset. Factory reset. Nothing. Everything's gone. Oh, boy. Data, apps, everything. Yep. I don't like this. You have, to, you have to add Facebook back in and everything. Oh my god. Ooh. Well, <laughs> is it totally busted? Is you have to go to replace No, no, the phone comes with a factory reset. Oh, okay. Oh, factory Shh. reset. Got it. Right, right back all the way down to the lowest revision. I mean, you still have to go for the upgrade OS. He's got to refriend the, the four friends that he had. <laughs> <laughs> it seems like you know he doesn't have four friends. Well. Yeah. <laughs> Johnny Moon, Trout, Juan Lowe. All right, guys, and try to get. Jeff never says yes. He yeah. never says yes to my request. <laughs> I don't understand. Try to get some rest. Midterms coming up. I'll meet with you after that. Don't spend too much time in that ritual book. Work on your homework. How can I even think about homework when suddenly there's a new layer to the universe that was just exposed to me? Minus one to academics. <laughs> <laughs> Can we have a football game coming up soon? How's your team doing? He's still trying to get Nick to the practice squad. Never mind the starting squad. Well, I'm going for a week. Uh, that will go well. The uh, by the way, sir. Yes. Not that I, I mean to harp on this at all, but uh, I, I thought perhaps we would also, there's a matter of getting paid for our involvement, the $75. He gave it to you before you left. Oh, he did. Oh, but I, I will give you um, a little extra because obviously you've been through quite a bit. Combat pay. <laughs> Hazard pay. Thank, thank you, go. sir. Oh, yeah, and here's your charcoal uh, drawings. Oh, thank you very much. But also you. here's video and pictures. Oh, oh wait, I uploaded it to the cloud. No worries. I'll, I'll send you a Dropbox link of the sacrificial changer, chamber where they take blood. I think you might find that interesting. I do. I will. All right, then. All right. How much money does he give us? He gives you another 50 bucks each. Okay. Dude, he's loaded. <laughs> 25 bucks seems too cheap. <laughs> well, we're tracking money very closely, so. I know. I guess I'll write down. Well, I'll write it down. <laughs> All right. So and obviously the half of the feather, the half of the quill is gone, the paper was gone, the lens gone. So it's not the easiest thing to do. Plus you, you, you know that is. Oh, I do want to talk to you about one more thing. Uh, what's that, sir? Black magic. Good God. There are rituals that will hurt people. And those rituals, you can you can cast those, but they'll do things to you too. What are you talking about? I just lost my phone. I had to revert back to factory settings. This is horrible. He's back on ice cream sandwich. What <laughs> <laughs> could hurt more than that? Yeah, exactly. What could hurt more than that? Let's just say I've seen some mental problems happen with people who spend a little too much time on black magic. Really? Black what? What kind of mental problems? Oh. People becoming extremely violent or obsessed with certain things, mm. unable to stay focused on anything any longer. 
such a diffy. So, <laughs> so it's like they're playing World of Warcraft or something. <laughs> no, worse than that, because they don't recover. Wow. Well, then, yeah. Well, so it's like World of Warcraft. Warcraft. <laughs> <laughs> Adam, you, you're proof that you can recover. It's like a relationship, though. You just have to cut the ties. It's a good point. You have to get over it. You have to substitute something else. Have you stiffed it? Oh, yeah. How long ago? ago? Oh, a couple of years ago. Yeah. Good job. That's hard. <laughs> D&D night wasn't as late night. <laughs> <laughs> was one of them named Molly? One of the people that, that Glenn Mac knows? Was one of them named Molly? No. It sounds like what you're describing. No. How can you Black tell... Magic. How can you tell... A difference between a black magic ritual and one that is just producing black. If well, that, the cops shoot the black magic ritual, but they take that, the white if, magic if, ritual if that, to Burger King. If that ritual is going to inflict harm on somebody, <laughs> if that ritual is going to inflict harm on somebody, there's a good a chance of black magic. Oh, all right. Hmm. That witch you, you, you saw, that could have been a normal woman who spent too much time with black magic. Really? Well, we'll keep that in mind then. Black magic is bad. And do you think, sir, magic is bad. that this ritual see, that we just used that. can be applied to the half a ritual that we have, so we can see the full ritual? No. The way that the way this book the book ends like this, mm -hmm. it's not like there's part missing. Oh, all right. It's like somebody recorded what they like they are working on a ritual, recorded it. You know, let me see that again. It, it reads through the ritual again. I've seen one similar to this once before that allowed people to absorb knowledge. Oh. That's interesting. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure if you figure this one out, it'd be real popular come final time. Huh. Plus two to academics. That's interesting. <laughs> I think Edison wasted an edge, so he has a plus two academics. <laughs> well, you have minus two for all your exams because you're a double major. Yeah. Oh, so it evens out. Yes. Yeah, that's right. That's right. So. All right, gentlemen. Good luck with your your your, your midterms. We'll meet back. Uh, we'll we'll touch base in a couple days after we're done with it, and uh, we'll go from there. I'll see if I can do a little research on the roost than anything that happened there in the past. Thank but you. But I I have midterms to administer too, so I can't guarantee I'll have much time to look into those things. I understand. Thank you. All right. Do you realize also the implications? If you ever have a piece of paper that you need to destroy completely so that nobody can find any trace of it, or if you have a camera lens that you need to destroy completely so that nobody ever has a trace of it, you could use this ritual to completely remove any trace of those two items. I don't want to talk about that anymore. Maybe we should go to an eye doctor Class. and see if they have any like, box of old lenses that we could take. Boy, that is really smart. I want to take uh, contact lenses. Wait, no. I want nothing to do with this. <laughs> I'm not participating in any way. Oh, disposable contact lenses devil, at like devil, Walmart? Devil magic. I ain't doing nothing. I don't know. It's hard to keep the parking. All right, oh, so. Good idea. Good idea. So here's how we, we're going to take our tests. Oh, by the way, another application, it seems to me. You could take Fermat's last theorem and write it all down, except for the part with the solution, and then use this yeah, to find the other half the of session. the theorem. And then solve the equation. Think about the applications. But there was no original. Mine is still all bigger than yours. Yeah, you wrote it. There you go. Actually, you wrote that. All right. So academics. Uh, so mechanically speaking, exams involve a single role using the major skill. So that you should have a skill based on your major. Yep. Modified by the student's academics in the exam difficulty. Freshman difficulty has a zero modifier. And academics is like charisma. You have zero unless you've got something to bump it or knock right. it down. Like if you have a double major, you have minus two to your academics. I have a double major, I have minus two. So. You might want to consider dropping one of those majors. No, but I also have the edge of test taker, which is a plus two. So, why don't we take some tests? Who would like to tell me how they do on their tests first? I'll go first. I'm, I'm adventurous. Remind us, what is your... Major. Okay, so one of those major is architecture. Architecture. That to that. And what is your skill Wait, in architecture? Hold on. Are Archite you double, hey, one more. Are you double majoring in architecture? No, just that's all I'm doing is architecture. 
Well, you what? said architect, your architecture, so I wasn't sure. Yeah. <laughs> it's because I started over the, over the word. I got it all out, then I had to repeat it again. <laughs> so I have a D6 in architecture. Okay. Uh, I have no modifiers to my academics. Can you use a wild die for this? It does I, not say yes or no, so I'm assuming well, you a do. A wild die, yeah. yeah. Wild die is for all treatment and skills. So and I would, I would assume, assume yes. yes. Yep. And what does he have? And there's no modifier because he's a freshman. Well, it depends on what you get, if I remember right. There's a table. Oh, okay. This is interesting. I got a five. That's probably really good. It's probably good. So Adam passes his exam. Do I get anything special? Wando passes his exam. Please roll me 2d6 and tell me the total number. Ooh, I don't know if you have to roll high or not. Yeah, I think it's just uh, four. Mm. Four. Teacher's pet. You've caught the eye of a professor. Dean's choice. The teacher's attitude toward you increases one level on the reaction table in Savage Worlds. Oh. So your architecture So one of my architecture teacher. teachers are... Well, it's, it's, it's freshman year, so I'm taking all core classes anyway. Yeah. Right. <laughs> it's all my liberal arts... Uh, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's probably like a, a, an art... A structure as art oh, class. Oh, yeah. So. Drafting or drawing or something. So you've got a contact. Yeah. Like a yes, really pretty nice much. contact. That could be useful. And i got to write this down. Remember this, or are you going to... You gotta remember that. That's your character. It's your character. <laughs> yeah, this is one in this heavy paper. That's nice, and that's permanent for the rest of your. I think it's only until the next exam. It's only until the next exam. Uh, All of this stuff is only until the next exam. So the goodwill wears off. Uh, there, I mean, there are there are a couple here that you keep forever. Oh. Like well, okay. So who's who's rolling next? Joe uh, Diffie? I'll roll. You have a double major? No. Do you have I a don't. major? He's a multitasker. I think he's got the multitasker edge. I do, which actually is great because it negates my ADHD, which gives me a minus two to academics. <laughs> that's, I thought that's multitasker awesome. was you could have more than one extracurricular activity without a penalty. That's right. So it doesn't negate his ADHD. Unless he took one of his extracurricular activities, gives him a plus two to academics. Oh, no. Do one of your extracurriculars give you bonus to academics, Joe Diffie? You hook it up with girls and smoking weed, give me a plus two to anything? <laughs> All right, so Mikey has a minus Smoking weed. And, yeah, it gives you plus two so, to smoke with me. So Joe Diffie has a minus two on his, on his roll. <clears throat> Wait, does he have something that counters his minus two to academics? I don't think so, Bob. What's your other... Uh, I, have, I have brave alertness and multitasker as my edges. And then what are your uh, extracurricular? My hindrances are overconfident ADHD minor and outsider minor. But you also have to pick two extracurricular activities as a result of multitasker. Oh, I actually didn't pick those. Oh. I'm sure I'm sure one of them is hanging out at the club that talks about sex, drugs, and rock and roll. Probably. So there's a social component. <laughs> is that like a plus to charisma? Yeah, I think he gets a plus to charisma. Oh, just saying. Gosh, how, how do I roll this again, then? What am I rolling? Uh, you, you, you roll, you, okay, so you should have a skill based on your major. Okay. It's kind of like, you can kind of make up your own stuff. Like kind of G. Right. So what do you have for that? Probably D4, or D6, I'm guessing. I have two six. And then you have your wild die. Okay. So it's just two D6 then. Yep, minus two. Do not, do not add them. Eight. All right. So nice you, you successfully pass your exam. <clears throat> what do you well, major? in? trait test, right? What's Joe Diffie majoring in? Yeah, it's trait test. Psychology, sociology. Uh, All right, now let's, get, let's uh, now roll me the two D6 and add them together. I took an easy major. <laughs> He's shocking that blonde girl in Ghostbusters. <laughs> He's going to change his ah. parapsychology next semester. Mm. Yeah. I have to reason psychology and parapsychology. <laughs> Me and G Mac are going to be hanging next semester. All right, so 2d6 and add them together. For me? Yes, sir. 10. 10. <laughs> Perfect for Mikey. Want to grab a drink? <laughs> Another student takes an interest in you. You get plus two charisma when dealing with him or her. Oh. So we'll have to figure that one out in a little while. So basically, she she and Joe Diffie cheat off each other to pass. <laughs> That's great. Oh, it's uh, it's it's what's her name? No, no, <laughs> it's not. It's him. We're due to see her again soon. What, what was her name again? Roxanne. 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 Just don't you put on the red light. <laughs> Sorry about it somewhere else in the night. You know, uh, Joel, Jeff, or Robert. I forget what my major was. 
You it should have an, it on your sheet. It was in an email that I sent. So it's not, I would assume you have a skill. You should have a skill for it. I thought it was in engineering. You have, like, knowledge no, it was farming. Are those like farming engineering? Yeah. You have, you have knowledge farming on there? Right. Are you rolling unskill? Let me see your sheet. What are you rolling? <laughs> you didn't learn anything this year, did you? <laughs> He's you a football player. You didn't learn anything these past three years of playing Savage Worlds, did you? <laughs> no, this, is, I mean, this, this is a thing. I got a D8 smarts. Let me see. Right. Let me see if you're sheet. undeclared, you get to use your D8 smarts. Yeah. I thought you got some hair, climbing, tracking, throwing, stealth, shooting, riding, notice, investigation, fighting. No knowledge of any major whatsoever. Investigation. You know what, criminal science major? <laughs> All right, so it's a D6 and a D4 minus two. Let's go. How do you spell Johnny for Johnny Moon? J well, I just said I could use my D8 smarts. M-O-O-N. If you already declare it, J-O-H. I guess I'm going to declare it. We don't have something written on the sheet. M-O-O-N. Then it's D8 minus, <laughs> D8 minus what about two. What his first name? His first name. Oh, How do you spell your first Who's name? J O H N N Y. Yeah. I'm checking the email to see if I can find your major. <clears throat> I know you sent that to us. I'm sorry, smarts minus one to take exams until they declare a major by taking a major skill. You must declare a major before becoming a junior. So you're just undeclared right now because there's not skill in it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So could work on that general studies major if you got going on. So D8 minus, it's actually minus one. Five. All right, so you successfully passed your exam. I'll give you your 2D6 down together. Five. Fiber. That's what I have now. Told, you guys just keep getting the right ones. Mm. Administrative privilege. Someone in administration likes you for now. You gain a connection to edge with a non-teacher at ET, ETU next to your until your next advancement. It's coach. Oh, yeah. I would have said the head janitor because that's a student Whatever. teaching job. Yeah. The student Somebody, job. You figure it out. Uh, so that means that your coach likes you. You get on the team. You spend more proud. time practicing, less time studying, and less you time less. Do you have knowledge for your specific <laughs> major or are you just considering yeah. how Knowledge as a skill. You have to have knowledge of something specific. <laughs> he did. He's majoring in what? Petroleum studies or something? Engineering. Engineering. All right, petroleum so it should be knowledge engineering then. Not just knowledge in general, it should be knowledge engineering. Okay. So, all right. And so what's your knowledge skill? Eight. Oh, you're very so You're eight and you're six because you leveled level up. I leveled up my knowledge and notice. Oh, smart. Fair enough. So, hopefully, this should pay off for you. So, I roll it. D8 and D6? Yep. Minus two. Minus two. No, he's declared. Oh, actually, you're declared. Sorry. Or unless there's something else on the sheet. Yeah, a five and a two. Mm. All right, so <clears throat> Trout, through the miracle of of who Trout is. Multiple <laughs> choice. Trout's got he, some he hired a tutor for, like, the last week. The best money could buy. <laughs> and he Man, just passed his exam. All right, so give me two D6 and add them together, Joel, please. Most challenges aren't necessarily academic. Yeah. Interpersonal. He's easy shy. You know, you think six and six. Twelve. Box stars. Although. Roll again. No. No, no this is like the bolt exploded. You have to roll something else. No. No, that's What's happen. this? You discover something extraordinary while studying. Please draw a card, Joel. Oh. Oh. <clears throat> I think you need to get a Joker. It's, oh, oh, oh so that's a good He's card. He's <coughs> a clubs. He discovered a brothel? <laughs> yeah. No, I wouldn't say discovered as so much as followed Joe Diffie there. <laughs> During one late night of studying, there were a lot of them. Wait a minute, wait a minute. He's at, at the pizza parlor. Yeah. No, in the library. Um, you follow a library. Uh, I don't know if I should tell you or tell everybody. I'll discover a recipe for beer pizza. I'll, t- I'll tell everybody. Nice. Um, you, you, you get bored studying, you follow a librarian who goes through one of those back doors that, you know, libraries have doors you don't get behind. Yeah. The door kind of slowly closes. You, you follow her behind. And oh, you followed her behind. Follow her through behind. Follow behind her through the door. She doesn't notice you. You follow her down a couple of flights of stairs into the the library's basement, where you see her enter the reserve, the special reserve section. 
of books. And she does something and she leaves. And when you try to get in, you can't. There's some metaphysical, some, some metaphysical force preventing you from getting in. And you can see that many of the books are not what you would consider textbooks. Does she Much more similar, similar to the ritual book. Sucked into another world. No, <laughs> she has some. She got past the barrier in some manner, but. But he doesn't know how. Yes. Wow. There's something to do with that behind. Mm-hmm. All you were trying to do was get that behind. Follow that behind. Which one was it? Go ahead, Edison. That's mysterious. Well, have you know, I'm a, I'm a test taker, and uh, I think, I think I failed. I think I failed. I think I got a 93. I think I failed. It's only my daughter. Uh, okay, so the first one will be. Uh, I was just saying, do you roll twice if with a double nature, or just once? One for each knowledge, right? I'm almost positive. Exam zero. rolls are normally taken with the highest major skill, even if the student has other minors. Double majors make an exam roll using each major skill, applying all academic difficulty modifiers, and take the highest result. Oh, oh okay, so you roll okay. twice and take the best. Take roll twice and take so the best. I would think you roll one wild die, <coughs> one skill computer science, and one skill mechanical engineering, and take the highest one of those three. Oh, seriously? I would have thought it would be one roll for knowledge with a wild die, for mechanical engineering, and with wild die and one roll for computer science with a wild die. There are two different I, I, Yeah, I'm, I'm, but I'm just thinking like when you shoot two bullets, you get one wild die. I, I see both sides. Two skill checks. I mean, what would be the advantage no, of this, taking this? This is your, your, well, you get to roll, you still get to roll twice. I mean, you still get another die more than everybody else. Okay. It's a more conservative interpretation, but I'll take it. Yeah. For your final, for your final, you can roll twice. Oh, that's the same, because it's not a knowledge check. This is midterms. Mm-hmm. It just comes under one heading. But it's two different classes, two different skill checks. With a, gun, with a gun, you fire... Yeah, I have a D6 symbol. But a gun, you're firing twice from the same gun, and you take the penalty. I don't know. So? Well... I got a two, and then a six and a six. I think it was sixes explode. So the sixes explode. So one is a ten in mechanical engineering, and another six for computer science. So he's out of twelve. He wrote the internet. 13, 14. Him and Al Gore. So 15 in computer science is higher than the 10 in ME. You don't get anything for a race? So the guy was 93. <laughs> so yes. I, I think I failed, guys. I, I really think I failed. I, I'm pretty sure I, I totally failed. All right, give you a 2D6. Add it together. Three. Three? Yeah. You are also a teacher's pet. Okay. So obviously one of the uh, no, I know what it is. <laughs> one of the computer science TAs has taken an interest in Edison. That's great. What's his name? What's her name? What's her name? <laughs> no. Roxanne. No. Not Roxanne. <laughs> Not it's, Roxanne. It's her older sister. We'll cover that. I'll, I'll start that detail out later. Okay. All right. So. All right. So congratulations, you've all managed to pass your midterms. Matilda. Matilda. Did you all take them? You all took them. You all passed. You're at the pizza barn decompressing. Joe Diffie's keeps relieving himself out back. <laughs> Guys, I could have sworn I failed. I was pretty sure that I failed. I know people like you in college. I hate them. I hate <laughs> them. Like I hated those people too. <laughs> Even though he was one of them. <laughs> I no. hate myself. There were times I was that person, too. I should. I, I, I want to clarify, I was never that guy in college. Because what I would do is i take the exam, and let's say it's multiple choice, 100 questions. If I knew I got it right, I'd put a check mark next to it. If I wasn't sure, I'd put it as a dash. At the end of the exam, I'd count up all the check marks. And then I'd walk out and i say, at worst, I got a 91. And let's say half of the check marks, even though they were a little bit of guessing, maybe half I got right. So I'm probably looking at a 96. I'm going to be all right. And then so I see that and go, well, I didn't pull the curve. <laughs> Let's see, I went to a real I went to a real tech school where everything was bell curve. Oh. So you had no idea how you did. Those classes kill me because you could have literally the entire class fail, and the highest grade is a 42, and that's the person who gets the A. Yep. Or, or you get everybody get an 85, and that's a C. Yeah, yeah. It's a... Uh, it's just made for low self-esteem. Yeah, that, was, that was just chemistry. My own physics, too, but I think it was just chemistry. My whole class, my, all of my business classes were like that. Mm-hmm. Just put on the curve. Done. Thankfully, 
people in my business school loved to party. <laughs> Did you hear about I still don't understand that shit. There was an economics professor who gave his, he, every year he gives his class the option. Um, they can take the exam, and then basically the person who gets the highest grade gets the A, and then everybody else is curved off of that. Um, or they can choose not to take the exam, um, and then everybody would get, you know, they would fail. But if they could get everybody not to take the exam, no, no. Basically, it was just the highest grade, you curve off of that. Anyways, if you could not take the exam, take a zero. But if everybody didn't take the exam, that would be a C. Everybody didn't take the exam, the highest grade is a zero. Therefore, that's an A. Therefore, everybody got A's. But the one person who takes the exam, even if they only get one question right, has an A. Correct. And so screws up everybody else. It's game theory. It was game theory. But yeah. The class managed to convince everyone not to take the exam. They all ended up getting A's. See, now, if you're following the laws of game theory, everybody should be taking the exam. Right. right. There was a, it was like an extra, or it was a question, it was like, if less than 10% of the people answer A, the people who answer A get, like, five extra points, That's or awesome. six extra points. Uh, so if, if you're way off, it did help you? If more... Uh, People are, but if more than 10% uh, do it, you get no credit, no extra credit. But you could also, if you answered like B, you get two points extra credit. So the rational result should be to answer B and take the guaranteed sure thing. Right. Yeah. But you're going to have some... 10% <clears throat> huge. Yeah. All right, so back to the... By the way, if you roll a two, mm -hmm. you actually learn something and you gain a skill. Oh, it's your choice. Fun. I was off by one. Ah. Oh, no greater than a D12. Gotcha. Ah. Uh, so. Wow, so you can gain skills that way. That's pretty cool. Yeah. So we have one level up, right? Yes. We have leveled up once. And every five we change tiers? Is that what it is? Uh, every four, I think it turns out being. Um, I mean, to get to sophomore, you have to have 20. So you have to level up one, two, 20 points, four times. You have to level up four times to get the Okay, so we won't. We leveled up once. We'll level up at mid the finals, then next midterm, and then finals. Okay. Yeah, it's about once every level up you do uh, you do midterms. You do a, a test. So I leveled you up early. Yeah. Too early. Yeah. Or putting the, the midterms too late. But we had a lot of sessions, so it seemed yeah. reasonable. All right, so you're... Uh, Decompressing, chowing down on your feet, your free pizzas because you. Semester's not over. We still have so Was it the whole semester? It was. It was the whole school year. I think it was the year. Oh really? Yeah. Damn. So. That's pretty good. There should have been a lot more backstabbing going on. Till the next calendar <laughs> run. So. Um, and Jackson Green shows up. The the assistant, Glenn Max Helper. And uh, he sits down. And he asks you guys. How did you do with your, with your midterms? This guy did very well. Why am I not surprised? We all did well, but he did really, really well. No, I got one question wrong. It was terrible. I did terrible. In all of your exams, you got one question wrong. I know. I should have. All your classes, one. you got one question wrong. It was horrible. I know. Don't rub it in, all right? <laughs> your, 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 mother, your mother must be very disappointed in this. They are very disappointed in me. They are. That is very true. How scary you are. How did you do, Trout? I aced him. You aced him, huh? Very okay. good. So, so guys, hey. you know, we, you guys said you had some bad dreams about the roost. And, you know, we've been trying to get in there. And they, the school won't let us in, but I, it's too good to pass up. Glenn Mack doesn't know I'm here, but uh, I'm willing to help you guys get in there if you could take some Get some information for us. I'll, I'll provide you some some equipment to do some measure, some some take some readings and see if we can find any kind of ghost or supernatural in there. Do we need to do a ritual? Why don't you go to the men's room right now? I think I need a drink. I'll be right back. I got to get a drink and take a leak. I'm clear all of a sudden. <laughs> <laughs> I actually thought you'd be the ritual guy. I really thought you would be. I thought it over, and, and I think that uh, his religion, religious, uh, uh, you know, it's an, it's a, it's a hindrance. Mm. So I'm trying to treat it like a hindrance. Oh, the religion is a hindrance. Yeah, it's uh, 
pretty sure it is. Oh, I thought you were. I thought Johnny Moon would go the spiritual way and take up the ritual. Yeah. Oh, no, if Devout was an edge, I would. But I got to You want to take that book? It's yeah. yours. Because you know what Edison would do with this. All sorts of things that are not intended. Like you need somebody who's uh, like uh, uh, the spirits. Okay. Let's put it this way: yeah. there are there are charts from a ritual sale. Because <laughs> <laughs> if if you don't if, oh. if you don't take that book away from Edison, he is going to do all those things that I personally would like to do with magic. I don't know. <laughs> My hindrance is a vow, but it's a it's a minor of the vows of religion. Oh. I also have an edge of devout too. Oh. I got I got to play it up. So okay. So, so while he's in the men's room. Uh, I have here a ritual for um, this book. <laughs> um, for seance to help you, um, for grave speak, to help you talk to whatever spirit is there. Now, hold on a second. I'm sorry, Professor Mack, but... Uh, Not Professor Mack, this is um, uh, it, uh, Jackson Green. Jackson is, Green. Sorry, Mr. Green, but uh, if you walk into a Walmart, you go into the toy section... Milton Bradley sells a Ouija board. I really don't imagine that things that you can purchase in the toy section of a children's <laughs> store are going to help us. He gives you a bag. Inside the bag, you see uh, it's the bag has two things in it. A handful of dirt and a little small dictionary. These are the things you'll need to conduct your, your seance. To speak to whoever's there. If I was there... I would remind him that we can't do this because we've never seen it done before. No, no. Once, once you see a ritual, you're covered. Oh. Once you're involved in a ritual, we can learn any other. Ritual. I, I, I feel like there should be a flying chariot of Apollo. It's, you know, it's, it's, oh. <laughs> it's very vague. The whole ritual thing is very vague. It doesn't yeah. spell out a lot of stuff. It, it's very game mastery dependent. So. Uh, are you saying then that instead of a Ouija board, we use a Scrabble board? Jeff. Is that what the dictionary is for? I'm saying that How does this you work? need the dictionary. All right. And the dirt from a cemetery. Okay. What's in the bag? Yep. As, got your, it. as your components, to cast this ritual. Right. Okay. What do we need to do precisely? Do we need a mortar and pestle? Do we need to crush? And in, in, th in this case, open the dictionary. Yep. The dictionary seems like a very specific kind of spell. I made that up. Oh, okay. What if it was like if it was a Spanish to English dictionary? Would you only you're, you're, looking, you're looking. You're looking. You're Spanish people. <laughs> so, 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 so you're looking. You're looking to speak with dead. So I went with grave dirt, like okay. cemetery dirt, and some and, and, and a dictionary helps as a translation or whatever. Oh, okay. It's oh, okay. So the dictionary isn't necessarily what I mean, a dictionary per se, but the dictionary will fit the role. Yes. Yeah. It's all about the role. It's not about the item. I am imagining trying so to... So Spanish English Dictionary probably could work. Would, get, would raise the dead, but only with Spanish speaking spirits. Yo soy muerte. Yo soy muerte. Yo soy muerte. Yo quiero hablar contigo. So get in there. How are you going with us? <laughs> I want to talk with you. Oh, probably. He, he hands you a small roll, a small folder piece of paper. The details which you have to do for the ritual. Um, you open the, you open the, the book, the, the, the dictionary. And as you span through the page, you're supposed to sprinkle the dirt inside it, bring the, the things together. And there's obviously the prerequisite chanting, etc. All right. Uh, chanting? Like, what chants do we have to say? It's all on the paper. Oh, it's all on the paper there. Oh, all right. Uh, there are a couple guards. I'll I'll get I'll distract them for you. I can't go in there because if I got busted, I'd get thrown out of here. Oh. But you guys, if you do get caught, you only get a slap on the wrist. Maybe a little fine. I'll take care of that. We'll, I'll take care of that for you to find. Well, don't you think the Isn't university kind of owes us, considering that we just survived a terrible bus it's trip? It's considered a construction site right now. The university has almost no control over who goes in and who goes out, other than to say nobody can go in without approval because they have to have a hard hat. So, oh, what if we bring our hard hats? <laughs> so we could just walk in there during the day. All we need is a like hard hat and a hammer. I can get a and just walk in with a sense of purpose. I'll get a bunch of football helmets. <laughs> I, I I worked for a factory for three summers. And one time I was maintenance. If I had a rag and a wrench, I could just walk the plant all day. <laughs> I listen to some podcasts with some people in, in the uh, entertainment industry, and they say like if you if you're like if you were dressed in black and carrying a ladder, nobody will stop you. They will open the door for you wherever you want to go. And you know I understand that all those movie sets are like 
catered food of the highest quality. Well, yeah. it depends on the show. If you can get in Friends there. did not have good quality food. Oh, seriously? <laughs> <laughs> well, because, you know, they wanted everybody to say skinny. Yeah. Drew Carey's show was actually legendary for their craft services. Really? <laughs> they, they blew their budget regularly on their craft services. <laughs> That's funny. So, you know, it's, 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 it's Friday night. If you want to meet there, meet. You can tell your location near the roost. It's about 11, it's about 11 o'clock. Oh, hey, guys. You, can this be done here? Uh, I think so. Okay. So 11 o'clock, we're going to the roost? You're going to go to the roost. You're going to see if you can see or find anything in there for me. And he, he gives uh, gives you guys a couple pieces of equipment. The IR detector again for the heat sources. Um, we got a PKE meter. <laughs> Come on! He gives one of the PKE meter. <laughs> okay, so this is how this works. You press this button. And if the arms go up, it's reading a lot of PK energy. Yeah, gonna, the, they're gonna, the higher they go up, the more energy they're raising, and the lights will go faster. <laughs> <laughs> and if you get to a thousand, then all the ghosts go to the Zool building. <laughs> what exactly is this thing detecting exactly? Edison is taking a keen interest in gadgets. That's his thing. It's a, it's a, we believe it measures supernatural activity in the, in the area. Hmm. What is that, a spectrometer in there? It's uh, it's Glenn Max. I don't know exactly how it works. All right, well, that's interesting. I have to chat with him about that. I'd love to know. Uh, you can't chat with him because he doesn't know I'm here with him. Oh. oh. Why doesn't he know? What was that? What? Why doesn't he know? Because the, the administration. Because the administration has already told him four times he can't go in there. So I'm taking it upon myself to get some information. So what is this plausible deniability on his part? That's it. How do I know I can trust you? Because I've been working with you guys for the past two months. That's true. He only well, sent and how many times money. Have you and I keep giving you money. And how many times have you almost got us killed? Well, just, Three, just once. The, just the twice, right? Just once. One, one, more time than I'm, one more time than I'm used to. <laughs> just once in Mexico. You can't blame me for that. What happens in Mexico stays in Mexico. <laughs> Wait, like, I like the bodies of those. <laughs> <laughs> the bodies of the kids. Yes, yes. poor, poor kids. Well, all right. Okay, well, I guess we'll go have an adventure and check it out. Oh, uh, hey, Joe Diffie, do you still what? have do you still have that that weapon from Mexico with you? What weapon? The one that you don't have. Do you have it with you right now? The one that I don't have. Of course, I have it with me. All right. I'm glad you don't have it, cause I hope that we don't Sorry. need to not have to use it. I'm. I'm glad to know that you're okay with that, Edison. <laughs> Great. <laughs> I'm going to stand right behind you, Edison, the whole time. Well, if I can help you steady your aim, I know you're a bit taller than I am. You're welcome to, like, put the put the gun on my head or my shoulder to steady your <laughs> aim. If I can help, no problem. I think that is a spectacularly good idea. All right. That might be the smartest thing you've ever said. My yeah, parents say I'm very book smart. Oh, there's chocolate dip over there. Yeah. yeah. And there's still the, the dip here. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying really hard not to eat that it's dip. It's only totally a little melted. I'm trying not to eat that dip. No. All right. So fresh fruit. Just take some fresh fruit. It's, it's 10 o'clock. You're back in your dorm getting ready. It's at 10.30. Oh. <laughs> Tell me what you're doing. Um, not reading a ritual book. Okay. I mean, are you Joe, bringing anything? Are you dressing all in black? Tell me, you know, give me the lowdown. Mm. Oh, Joe, Joe's got shoe polish out. He's putting it on his face. That's a great idea. Yeah, yeah. Uh, when Edison sees Joe later after he's all dressed in black, the only thing he has in black, by the way, is like his like old Sunday school suit, and it's too tight. It's like three sizes too small. Um, so he's got like suit pants, and he's got like so a, is that a minus one to agility. A <laughs> black jacket, like it's a suit jacket. It's just, he goes higher than but when he sees <laughs> Joe Diffie, he's like, "That's a great idea. Can I have some of that? Whatever you put on there, that's great." Absolutely. I get out a can of black spray paint. <laughs> oh, <right. laughs> Sharpie marker. You know, no kiwi polish. <laughs> and a Sharpie, yeah, I get a Sharpie marker out, and I start coloring in Edison's face. Hey, Joe Diffie, that's like a temporary marker, right? Of course it is. Why would I use permanent marker? Yeah, Edison, that's, that's crazy. Sorry. Yeah, that's a bad. Sorry, I don't know why I asked that. 
Thank you. Thank you so much. Juan well, Lowe sees these guys and goes, oh, that's a good idea. I'll go change. And puts back on his black mesh shirt. It's club clothes. <laughs> <laughs> No, that got that burnt. His, his parents burned that when they picked him up. He's, he's, got, a, he's got club clothes. Johnny Moon, are you playing tonight or are you just going to watch your phone the whole night? I am dressed in black. Black, black. Uh, I am black. bringing with me some Alka Seltzer, a couple film canisters, and a bottle of water. Okay. How much time do we have to prepare? You, sure you have an hour. Chemistry? Have an hour. Is that is enough time for Edison, Edison to use yeah. his MacGyver oh, yeah. edge to create, try to create a smoke bomb that might, if needed, he could send something that creates smoke out? At a minus two, because it's a short time frame. Okay. So Edison crafts a very makeshift smoke bomb, leveraging fireworks from the recent Fourth of July celebration. Oh no, that wouldn't be right because it's in the middle of the semester. Homecoming. From homecoming. You won't know if it works until you try to use it. Okay. <laughs> this is Texas. There's fireworks in there. everywhere in Texas. That's a good point. Trout dismantle some bullets. You bring anything interesting? Dressed in black, I'm assuming. Queen T-shirt. No, Queen T-shirt. <laughs> black pants. And oil can. Oil can. Hey, have you oh, oiled for your car? Yeah. Yeah. Any uh? He studied the fuel. Interesting. Chemical properties of oil that, that might come in handy. So, so he's got a little oil can. Juan Lowe is bringing gun one and gun two. <laughs> <laughs> Look at those guns. And he's, his bright flashlight. All right, somebody brought a flashlight. Oh, flash. Well, and we got smartphones. Flashlights on the smartphones. Yeah. And what well, happened I, when I, got my, I got my backpack with me. Pretty I got cool. my Swiss Army knife, my flashlight. It's, it's off. It's okay. My water bottle. The thing that Edison doesn't know I have that I have. Uh, is anybody in? Why wouldn't the ritual pull the flashlight? Yeah, I guess we'll find out. This is like the guaranteed way to blow to blow people's small electronics. Like, actually, here's another application, guys. I was just thinking, if you wanna, if you ever concerned that you're being bugged or tracked by the government, do one of these rituals. You'll destroy the bug, and then you can speak in privacy. <laughs> It's true. Can you imagine what drug dealers would do or international spies would do if they had knowledge of this information? You just do the one that casts light, and you could destroy any surveilling device that's trained yeah, upon you. Surveilling. Nice word. Yeah. Nice use of the word. All right. Well, it looks like we're ready. All right. So you got your stuff. You head on over to the, uh, the meeting location. Jackson Green is there waiting for you. He says, give me a few minutes to go talk to the guards. Uh, I believe all the emergency exits are chained shut now. Oh, that's safe. Why would they do that? Because they don't want kids getting in there. They only have one way, one way in and out now. Well, what if the construction workers have a fire and they don't need to get out? Well, they, maybe they open it during the day. I know at night they're, they're locked up. All right. So. Can we, uh, I know a few of us have some knowledge of locks. Can we open a few of these in case we need to make a hasty escape? Well, once we get inside, I can give it a try. All right. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's locked on the inside. So. Okay. Because um, you can't open a fire door from the outside anyway. All right, so you see Jackson Green heading over there, and there's, there's two guards by the front door. And he uh, strikes up a conversation with them. Draws them off to one side a little bit. And do we, we look like we have an opening? Go <laughs> Mission Impossible team da -da -da, kicks in. Da -da -da, da -da -da. Uh, how do we do stealth? Da -da -da. Probably with stealth. Alright, everybody give me a stealth check. We're going to take the average. So if Joel fails and Mike makes it with a raise, it averages out. Okay. Edison has no stealth skills. How many people here have stealth? Oh, wait. I does do. Jack of All Trades apply to stealth? I, I do. I don't know. I would imagine so. Jack of All Trades is powerful. It's basically like. Your D4 in every skill, right? I don't think I don't think it's uh, athletic skills. I think it's just knowledge skills. Uh, knowledge in like human. Well, that was everything. I hear Mike is rolling dice. Seriously, Mike just turned invisible. Twenty-one. Like I said, Mike just turned invisible. Uh, Juan Lo got a four. 
Three. You want to bet you that? Well, or it might be more interesting to, to push Josh to find out what happened when he bit. All right, so. It's all us. It's smart based stuff. Oh, okay. Okay. All right, so. Uh, hold on. I got uh, Johnny Moon. Went for Johnny Moon. Uh, Joe Tenney went first. He was doing like. You thought he'd turn invisible. Wow. Johnny Moon followed him in. Dead silent. Juan Mo Edison. Uh, oh, Juan Mo just walks in like it's no big deal. Nobody sees him. Nobody notices him. He has a ladder. <laughs> he has a ladder. <laughs> he's wearing all black. He's carrying a ladder. <laughs> Edison rolled a four, but he's untrained in stealth, so subtract two from that four, and that puts him at a failure of a two. So Edison begins to walk, and. Uh, he suddenly develops an uncontrollable urge to sneeze. <laughs> uh, 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 joke! Did anybody hear that? I think that wasn't too loud, bless, right? Bless me! <laughs> bless me. <laughs> as Edison, Edison is almost to the door at that point. I think I'm allergic to this black dry marker, guys. <laughs> Joe Diffie, Joe Diffie jumps out of the shadows, covers his covers his mouth and face. <laughs> gets, a, gets a handful of snot, Mikey. Sorry, right, I just wipe it off on Edison's. These are my church clothes. Trout, what are you doing? Roll six. Trout, trout, roll, roll, trout roll the six. <laughs> and goes the the Fred Flintstone tippy toe. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so. I actually have a picture of the arena. Ooh, oh. I found one that I like. You'll have to describe it for the audio people. Well, it, it's pretty much the same one that we had last time, mm -hmm. except, uh, well, it actually looks like an arena now. I was going to say, it looks like a bus. So, if you look there. Oh, that's nice. Ooh, that is a nice stadium. Wow. Well, it does look this nice, but it this, gives you, this gives you the idea of what it looks like. Isn't that where the fire was? Yes. Yes, I, it, it, it doesn't look like this anymore, but I'm giving you the idea. So you come in uh, on the top there where all the glass is. That's not Unless the there wasn't any glass, but it was all concrete all the way around. From this perspective. They're rebuilding it. There's a little, yeah, they're rebuilding with the glass. Thanks, Alan. Mm -hmm. So at the top, you can walk all the way around the top. They haven't even done demolishing it. No, they are. Yeah, well, I'm re I got a description in a second, but I'm, yeah. I'm recapping what we yeah. have. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. you can walk all the way around the top. You have to walk down to the floor. And so past the bleachers, through the bleachers. Yeah, you go down the bleachers. And then there's other things underneath the bleachers. Okay. Okay. So the bleachers are not, they're solid. Solid to the floor. But you can get behind them somehow, and that's open. There's space. corners and stuff where there's door, where there's entryways and such. Okay. Always. The roost has been gutted. So, I mean, this is, you know, to give you the idea of the layout. Sure. Uh, most of the burned and damaged bleachers have been removed. The scorch marks on the walls have been scrubbed clean, and the ceiling and supporting structure look to have gotten a coat of paint. Unfortunately, the floor hasn't pulled up, been pulled up yet, and it's a mess. Between the fire and the water, it's bent, warped, and burnt. Ooh. New wiring hangs all over. Boxes of lights are stacked in a corner of the floor, but the smell of burnt wood and plastic still permeates the air. And you know it will for a long time to come. Yes. You know, we did something really good here. We saved the lives of just about every single freshman. Is this it? Why is there a smell of burnt hair? Who got burnt? Who died? Well, the whole place went up in flames. But why was there burnt hair? There I didn't say hair. Burnt hair and plastic. Burnt wood and plastic. Oh, my mistake. Did we save any of the three people who died on the Mexico trip? No, they were all uh, upper demonic people. Oh, you mean from? Were they in the uh, groups? No, they're all they're all older. Oh. Or you wouldn't you don't even know you really don't even know what oh, plastic. But we did save people, and we sent them back in the first bus. We never found out about them. We have to find out later. They must have been injured in the bus crash. The injured people that we saved, they got to be around, right? I don't think. Those would be good contacts, good friends for us later. Yeah. Remember we saved your life. All right, so you're, you, you, you've come in <laughs> upstairs. It's pitch black in there. The couple of glowing exit signs hanging precariously. You know, not hooked up any, not, not fastened, but still getting some electricity to them. At least um, the batteries still work. I think, hang on. 
Edison presses a few buttons, and the LED on his phone shines a bright light. Destroy your, 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 vo your voice echoes. Place. Guys, guys, guys. There's an echo, 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 echo. Wait a minute, wait a minute. I saw this in Star Trek, Star Trek. Roll, Joe Diffie's going to shoot you in a minute. Roll, <laughs> gently roll, down roll, the stream. And he starts singing in three-part harmony, row, 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 your boat with himself. Isn't that cool, guys? Joe whacks him on the back of the head with the pistol. Ow! <laughs> oh, pistol Ow, whack. what was that for? Four, four, four. It was more like, thwap, thwap, thwap. you say three I thought, I thought there was something that landed on your head, Anderson. I, I think you just need to be quiet. All right. Ow. I'm a little, I'm a little jumpy right now. You wouldn't just, want this gun going off. You could have asked politely. I hope the safety's on. Should be the first, second or third. No, it right, doesn't have a safety. It's a revolver. Oh. Oh. Ow. Blueberries contain blueberries. Sugar. So bottle. All right. So. Mango. What are you gonna do, guys? Guys, I think the best plan of attack is if we all divide up and let's spread out just in teams of one and let's go explore this place. I think that's the for the best. Teams of that one sounds one. like a bad, bad <laughs> idea. <laughs> Wait, I meant to do the opposite of that. <laughs> all right, let's one. go to where... I think... I, 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 got an idea. I got an idea. Hold on a second. Maybe Harrison. we could look to see if... Watlo, Cochise, Trout, and I are going to go this way. You go that way. What's the opposite of I thought Edison, Edison was going to be the first one down the stairs, the hard way. <laughs> <laughs> so you Let's wanna... see if we can remember anything from the dream. All right. Well, I remember I was underneath the bleachers. Yeah. Like part of through the hallway. Yeah. Underneath the beaches. You think we should start there? Go underneath the bleachers? I, I think that's a good idea. Well, you, you also have ritually provided. That might, some, might even summon the girl back. You know, have with that. If we go under the bleachers, we're less likely to be seen as well. Maybe we do the ritual there? I mean, maybe we read this dictionary under the bleachers? Yeah. Because preposterous, hypothesis, juxtaposition are all words I needed to brush up on. <laughs> <laughs> I think they're all big points in Scrabble. Juxtapose. Juxtapose. You've successfully conjugated juxtaposition. All right, so you head on down to the floor. Yes. And then we try to find a way to get behind the bleachers. I mean, the, the, the areas all are, are all open. Oh wait, is there an attic in the stadium? I mean, is there a um, what's the opposite of attic? A basement in the stadium, like a cellar? Because I think we should all go into the cellar. And we should open the door and then ask, "Is anybody down there?" And there then we hear there. some steps. Then we go down. But first, we have to tell everybody else we'll be right back. That's right. Wait, is there beer? And can we have? Uh, underage sex before we... Yeah. You know, there's still some of those pizza boxes left that didn't burn all the way down. Oh, God, it's like six weeks old pizza? Trout. Yeah. <laughs> How bad could they be? <laughs> They've been preserved by the cook by getting super cooked in the fire. They've been dried out. Yeah. they smoked. Now eat six-week-old pretzels. What's the difference? Look, my, my uh, grinder fell behind the uh, radiator. <laughs> the difference is when I buy a pretzel, I don't know that it's six weeks old. Home reading the hot dog. Anyway, all right, so you, you guys descend slowly down to the uh, court, and you feel cold. You know, guys, I feel cold. cold. I didn't think that I they had goosebumps. Air conditioning turned on already. I mean, I thought that guy <laughs> was strange. I don't think the air conditioning can't work in that. Bogey sandwich. Bogey sandwich. But why are you here? So. Oh, guys, look, I found a nickel. <laughs> it's not a nickel, it's a knockout from the electrical box. Oh. Oh. <laughs> All right. That's not good. All right, so we find a space that's right. relatively clean. Sure. And, uh,. We all sit down cross-legged, because I guess that's what the ritual tells us to do. Whoa, 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 what you guys doing? What uh, we're, uh, you need to keep watch. Yeah. <sighs> Give me your cell phones so you don't break your phones. Trout, are you all right over there? You're saying ouch. Legs aren't made to sit this way. Oh. <laughs> well, let's hurry up and get this done. His, his legs are You guys can give me your cell phones. I'll go check out by the beaches. Here, you can take mine. <laughs> All right. just, uh, just whatever you do, uh, there is a there's a tab in there 
that says personal, don't, whatever you do, don't click on that tab. So sure right. you got it. Personal. It's a certain web page. It's personal. Don't look at the web page. You know, if it's on the internet, anybody can see it. Is that how that works? <laughs> so Juan Paul immediately looks around trying to find reception and looks at the personal page. It's porn. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know if I'm successful. There. Is it the reception. right kind of porn? <laughs> oh, my God! <laughs> it's, it's the right kind of porn. Oh, yeah. Oh, so it's uh, it's it's large. It's like donkeys, not goats. Oh. We're not going to hurt the donkey too bad. Goats eat. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, oh that's the wrong kind. I don't even know if that qualifies as porn. Uh, so we sit cross-legged. We uh, take out the patch of uh, ground earth from the cemetery. Wadmo's well, going to try and keep them in view, but he wants to see if he can check them. Get as far as he can to check out under the bleachers. Well, well, it's, the it's, well the bleachers are solid. Yeah, but no, he wants to get underneath them, like where we're running in the okay. We But he's not getting out of view of those guys. Okay. We toss the earth on the ground, making sure that a piece of the earth touches each of us. We open the dictionary to the page communication, and uh, then we murmur the chants as we were told. All right. It gets colder. Colder. And then you start to hear whispers just off to the side. You can't localize them, but you hear them right out in the darkness. And you feel drawn to the center of the court. You actually see ghost, a ghost starting to materialize at the center of the court, coming into wow. view. How close are we done? Are we done with the ritual? Yes, yeah. okay. I wasn't sure if this was. During us doing the ritual or something from the roost of uh, like haunting us yeah. separate yeah. from this by the way is this the foolproof ritual you don't have to roll for this one? Oh, thank <laughs> you. The first one's free. It's like crap. It's like pop, pop boy rituals are free. Uh, <laughs> uh, do you know what do any of the uh, uh, components survive? Is there still dirt? Is there still a dictionary? No. I'm just curious. Okay. Always consume. This is a great way to get rid of unnecessary dictionary. Actually machines. I should say destroy. Okay. So, you know, it's it's dust or mess or, you know, dictionaries fall up, something falls apart, and mm -hmm. so on and so forth. So. You don't need yard sales All the letters fall up. You don't need goodwill. You can just get rid of your dictionaries this way. It's so easy. Man. It's a great way to hide forensic evidence. Well, let's say you got landfill. Let's say you got, like, an Nuclear entire... Nuclear waste? Yeah. You put it in a cemetery? Okay, there's a ghost floating over half court. Oh, yeah. Wait, this? Wait no. we'll talk later. Can Juan Lowe see this ghost? Yes. Oh. It's, she's glowing. I mean, it, well, I, just, I don't know if it's only visible to nope. people. What, what does the ghost, ghost uh, look like? The devil. It's a devil. It's where it's, it's, where she work? She's a, she's a, she's a young woman, the one who touched you. Oh. Was it? Yes. Oh. She's hot. The one who's hot for you. <laughs> she's hot for you. Yeah. But she's got the hots for you. So she's, you guys are all not at half court. You're mm -hmm. all far I start to walk over. One yeah. will join the group. Don't let him go alone, guys. Edison stays stays with Johnny Moon. One more, one more. Do you want to know you were alone? So what was that, Johnny Dip? It was nice knowing you, Juan Lo. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Juan Lo, this is a spirit. This, this could this could rattle Juan oh, no, Lo's one, world. Juan Lo's going and approach the ghost too, and as he walks up to the group, he's passing. <laughs> Start video. Oh, he gets a cell phone back, Edison does, and he turns on very quietly, surreptitiously, the video function. Okay. Who are you? As you. Shh. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> she looks at you as you as you all finally close in on her, and and she almost begs you, and she just simply says, "Guard it." You immediately uh, experience a powerful vision, and she sh clearly shows you the dream you've been having. And you recognize that you're her in the dream. And I'm going to read you what it says here. You can figure it out. Huh? That's what I said. All the jokes about guys who like are, you know, girls. And... <laughs> <laughs> they feel her panic as she ducks into a darkened doorway, hurriedly hiding in an unusual-looking cross inside a clamshell case. 
excuse me, at the sound of footsteps echoing in the darkened hallway, she darts from her hiding spot and hurriedly shoves the clamshell case into a trophy, a glass trophy case. The footsteps sound closer and she flees down the hallway until she turns a corner and emerges onto the empty basketball court. She stumbles at the Raven's logo, right where the heroes are standing, and turns to face her attacker with her hands up in supplication. Before she can even finish turning, she is consumed by a fire so intense the pain turns to ice, freezing the words on her lips. And she disappears, and all that's left is the where her body the, would have been, you know, the mark of her body burned into the floor, even though it's long since been sanded out. Hey guys, I have a dictionary app on my phone. Can we call her back, maybe? Like, uh, we got some more questions for her. Mikey. J- Joe's just beside himself with what he just saw. Oh, my- Mikey, Mikey snaps a little bit. Oh, I mean, Joe, Joe Diffie snaps a little bit. He feels her pain far worse than any of you. Oh. So you are now psychically sensitive, Edge. Ah. But unfortunately, you are going to have to take that for your next level up. Very nice way to work that in there, Mr. Kayer. Yeah, that was good. Um, you know what? It must be uh, all of his uh, transcending reality that uh, makes him so sensitive to that. Oh, interesting <laughs> point. He's able to commune with the spirits because his mind is broader than the rest of ours. Yeah. So, Joe Diffie, are you all right? Uh, I, I don't think so. Uh, I'm, I'm not real sure right now, it's in, but I almost felt like I felt her pain as she was burning up. That sounds horrible. You know what I, I, I do? Like, I felt like her and I connected on a different level. Not that level. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, 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 no, no, it's not that level. If anybody can do it, Joe Diffie, you can. I, I try to connect on that level with women that are still breathing. <laughs> you know, Joe Diffie, I don't know if this helps you because you're clearly going through some sort of spiritual challenge right now, but whenever I find myself in a dark place, like when I was taking my computer science exam earlier this week and I thought that I got a 99, I think back to happier times to my favorite game on the Atari 2600 ET, the extraterrestrial. And I think about the joy that that game gave me, <laughs> doing the same movement over and over again with no apparent solution or uh, even plot. Or and, waiting to get out of the pit. Yeah, and, and <laughs> oh, never getting okay. out of the pit. And uh, it just makes me feel good. So call upon the experience of the past. Of Maybe it'll help you. Fall right back. That immediately bought it. That's what it was. <laughs> I forgot. So, you guys... Uh, it's easy enough based on what, what you just saw. To trace yeah. back where where she yeah, planted, we where, we where, where the trophy case is. we got to go check out where that clamshell case was with the cross. Okay. So we go there. All right, so you, you head back under the bleachers, a couple hallways. Edison checks the video. What did he capture? You hear you guys talking, but you don't see anything. Well, guys, I got good news and I got bad news. The good news, oh, the bad news is that we didn't get the ghost on video. But the good news is that this HD quality video on the Samsung Galaxy <laughs> S5 is unlike anything I've ever seen. It's really good. Look at that. I, I, sponsor I, I am, wasn't looking. <laughs> I, I am going to give Juan Lowe the benefit of the doubt even though he didn't say it. I'm assuming he, was, he had the PKE meter on of course while, while the ritual was invoked. Mm-hmm. And right from the start, you just saw the, 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 the arm slowly widen Ooh. out. The light slowly up. I'm going to go down and build one. And then have it for every game night. <laughs> until, until the point where it was, it was, it was pretty, it was very, very active. So. so there we are at the trophy case. And do we is, there, is there a cheerleading trophy where the eyes follow you everywhere you go? No. So you head down to the, down to the hallway. The you find, you know, there's a series of neglected old trophy cases. There's a series of trophy cases, okay. all old stuff, you know, 1930s, 40s, 50s, 60s. Um, and as you pass by one, you totally get the, the deja vu. You know, this is the one, it's the 1950s. This is the one my great uncle won in 1934 spelling game. Really? What was his winning word? The. What was it, buddy? Roosevelt? <laughs> I didn't even know that was a word in a spelling bee. <laughs> the uh, glass is locked, though. Uh, well, I guess we got to come back some other time. Oh, that's Hold too on. bad. 
I guess the glass is locked. I guess we gotta go home. Hey guys, home. go find, go find, let's go find a piece of wire real quick. <laughs> you didn't bring one. I, oh, look! I got a piece. Of, I got a bobby pin. I keep with me all times, just in case. No, wait, <laughs> hang on. Look, if you take the the heat meter, I've got a spare grounding cable right here. We can just kind of take that off, and that's only gonna give you about four inches. But maybe that's enough. That's perfect. All right, we just put it back later. Uh, four inches. That's all I've ever needed. Do you need a any uh, mechanical? Works two times. <laughs> What's that? To take the wire from the other. Yeah, no, that's fine. Okay. okay. What's my lock? It's a six. That's very helpful. Oh, she has a light on it. <laughs> hey, that that helped me. So yeah, I, I'm able to slide the lock off the alligator tooth. It's the exact same when I was visiting. <laughs> well, hello, and I just slide the case open. Where'd you learn to do stuff like that? That's very impressive. Uh, sometimes you gotta you gotta know these kind of things when you live in Hong Kong. Huh. Wow. Is that the Bible? Well, we're not stealing. We're we're we're, we're taking this for for the lady. She said to protect it, and so it's not stealing. She gave it to us. Hmm. Do you guys find it weird that this whole building is set for demolish, but they haven't taken out the trophies yet? It's not demolished. The refurbishment. Oh, refurbishment. Oh, all right. That's why they had new lights and new wires. Can you knock this over, please? Probably a blade. That's what a cat is. Yeah. So you look inside the case, and you you, you recognize the... Um, what was I looking for? Is it the leather cover. The clamshell? Yeah, the clamshell thing. It's, it's behind the trophy, and it says Nina Castle on it. Mm. Nina Castle. Huh? So you right. scan it with the PKE thing? And there's... Something in there. So I grab it out of there. Edison right. Google's Nina the Castle on his, on his smartphone. You don't have reception in the basement. Oh. It's spelled out here. Right. Not me making it up. <laughs> You're in a concrete block at this point. Yeah, yeah. Sure, let's get out of here. So you, as soon as as soon as um, Juan Lo grabs the cross, all lights go out. And you hear... Including the one on his phone? <laughs> including the one on his phone. Not Ooh. again! And... So you really get out. Mm -hmm. You sound like you're in a jungle. Hisses. <laughs> Hisses like snakes. Joe Dibby swears something just ran by his leg. Something just stretched my leg. That was me. Sorry yeah. about that. Oh. It's Edison worse. swears there's a snake crawling down his stomach. Yes. Edison <laughs> swears there's a snake crawling Thank down his stomach. Oh, guys, get the snake off. Get the snake off. It's on me. Oh, it's a snake. It's a bad one. Get it off. i tell you, it's, it's, it's messing with that double magic. Let's get out of here. Grab, grab. For turning cranks. You did see it before you picked up it was a cross. I'm okay with that, but still, it was double magic that led us to the cross. <laughs> it was. Juan Lowe's got all kinds of issues tonight. <laughs> Those little rituals will not get along with I, I grab the people next to me. Full of chain, everybody. Who's yeah. got who? Let's go. Everybody here. The humidity is oppressive. Grab the person next to you. Let's get move on. You can feel the, the moisture in the air, the heat. Do we see the jungle, or do it's, we still it's see black. It? It's black. It's all blackness. I mean, you're, you're, you're basically on the ground at this point. I have a light vision. <laughs> you have a light vision? <laughs> you need no I light vision. Party, yeah. You need no light vision right now. So we, everybody grabs a hand or grabs, you know, shoulders or whatever the person next to them, and we try and let's walk out in the line. I should make you guys have like a agility check to see if you grab the right part or not. But anyway. <laughs> no, we're all making sure that we're above the nipples. <laughs> this is right Those work for you. Hey, poke, just poking you in the eye then. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but I'm okay with that. Yeah. Because <laughs> poking in the eye. <laughs> All right, Johnny Moon feels his way through the hallway. Um, give me a, you have streetwise? Give me, give me something to help you find your way out. Now Notice or investigation? Protection. I got streetwise. Tracking? Common Tracking is great. Tracking can track way back out. You remember Tracking where you were. Tracking. That's good. Three. Johnny Moon takes a wrong turn and bangs his head into a locker. <laughs> Doink! You can Benny it. It's 11 o'clock, we're closing in. Oh, Benny it. Watch, he throws in a fighting counter now. <laughs> oh, he's rolling again. Five. Oh. 
No, because I get plus one better because I'm lucky. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh. oh he had it. He was, he was leading. <laughs> I'm tracking the rear. <laughs> we just came from that way, guys. <laughs> Giant one leads you out. You see the, uh, the exit side dangling just ahead of you. That's lit up? Uh, yeah, you're, 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 you can see it's like you're not in the forest. That you're not in the jungle anymore at that point. Welcome to the jungle. As you come out onto the floor, um, a light flashes down on you. Hey, what are you doing down there? Juan Lo stuffs the clamshell thing in his pants. The, the cross. It's, it's one of the two guards that was outside. There are, do we see an exit? Are you, tell me. I mean, you guys have been in there at start. Like I said, well, I don't know, we can see. Where is it? The only light we see is that flashlight. Him shining down is ruining all of your, you know, much of your light vision. Where, where, is, where is he? Where are we? Uh, I am going to say you guys are coming out. Should I there. use the smoke one? And he is coming down the, the stairs over here. This is uh, Edison will activate. Not the, even. No, Let's not yet. Go. Okay. We're going to try to hightail it out of there. All right. Give me a. I guess sure. an agility. If you want some. Okay. Make sure nobody trips or falls on the steps or anything <clears throat> as you're running out. It's Paul Blart, small cop, so it's not going to be a big deal. <laughs> <laughs> hey, he did take down that whole gang of thieves. I've never seen it. Ah, Three. Edison has the worst agility possible. Oh my god. <laughs> you guys just throw bays at me. Oh, you them all fast. Five. five. Ten. Five. I can help somebody. Seven. <laughs> oh my goodness. How many? Fourteen. On a D4. With a D4. I'm the Fourteen D4 and a D4. Wow. Trump? Seven. Trump? All right. So Edison is the first to react, sprinting up the stairs, startling everybody. <laughs> he uh, he starts to starts to move in slow bullet time like Matrix. He manages to run up and then takes the time to do like an incredibly low limbo for no reason whatsoever, and then gets back up again and continues to just run. Just because he can. Yes. <laughs> nice. I saw uh, X Men: Days of Future Past. Probably. It's like you went back in time and saw the movie from like four years ago and finally caught up with it. Did yeah. you watch the road cut that we did? Anyway. It was good, right? Was good. Did you enjoy it? I did, very much. Yeah. You didn't watch Ro the Road Cone with HBO? That's what it says. Which one was the bat? Uh, X-Men 3. X-Men 3. Oh, whichever one that one is. First. And I'm actually, I'm going to say, Days of Future Past did a great job of retconning and get rid of all the crap that was bad in X-Men 3. Oh, yeah. so that movie no longer exists? Yeah. It's like Highlander 2? Everything from 1973 on changed. <laughs> oh. So, yeah. all right, so you guys managed to make it to the, to the front door. The guard is, is still chasing after you. Uh, you can see that Jackson is still yapping at the guy over on the other side. Um, I see you book out and run the other way. Mm -hmm. Do you guys need the smoke bomb? I still have the smoke bomb. Wait, I can light the smoke bomb. No. I, see you, I see you're saying no, but does that mean... Your eyes are saying yes. Is that an ironic no? Does that mean like you're you're under duress and you really want me to light Shut up and run. All right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you guys hightail it out of there. The guard, you lose the guards in the darkness of night. Fortunately, Jackson chose a good night for you. There's no it's a new moon. Johnny Moon? Cloudy new moon. Ooh. Johnny Moon has did, a twin? Did we, did we have a rendezvous point? He's got an evil twin? A new moon? Yes. Yes, you did. He's got to go. So we go to the rendezvous. Okay. It takes him a good 20 minutes to get there. He had to wait to disengage from the guards. It didn't look suspicious. So what did you guys find? Did the scanners pick anything up? Uh, oh, Scanner pick up about this much energy. <laughs> That's more than I've ever seen before. Uh, you have a flashback. She said, guard it. And we found... We found she, the, wait, excuse me while I whip this out. <laughs> oh, no, no, what are you doing? What do you, are you did doing? Did you know a girl whose last, last name was Castle? I, I, from, I've, I've only been here maybe four or five years, so no. He's not that old. It wasn't, I mean, it was 1950. The metal said 1950 Nina Castle on it. Oh, 1950. And we find, we find this. Whoa, what is that? It's cross. I see that. 
It's a four-inch tall gold crucifix ending in a sharp point at the bottom. A gold chain has been somewhat crudely attached to the top so that it would be worn as a necklace. The crucifix is intricately etched with patterns within patterns that defy the eye. You know what I feel like when I watch one of these? You guys remember back in the 1990s, they had those three-dimensional photographs of dolphins, and you had to stare at it, and then the 3D came out? I feel like that, but I never could see the dolphins. That was the problem. No, I never, I never got those things to work. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, cool. You good? Mm -hmm. That's impressive. Well, you guys recovered, and I'd like to take it in for study, but... No, we can't do that. You're going to hold on to it? We're going to hold on to it. The, the, the girl, when when they were, were, were dancing with the devil, the girl come up and showed us the vision. It was just, it was, she said, guard it. So we got to guard it. We can't let nobody have it. Okay. I can, if you let me have it, I can do more research on it. I have, I have more sources if to do that. If you have it, we ain't guarding it. We got to guard it. know where it is, but I understand. Maybe well, tomorrow we'll bring it in and see if we'll, we can help you. Uh, yeah, we, 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 can, we, can, it. we can help. We can bring it to you and stay with what we can't just give it to you. Do you want to take a picture of it, Professor Mack? That way you can begin Jackson your history. Green. Oh, Jackson Green? Oh, still with Jackson Green. Yeah, Professor Mack needs plausible, Glenn Mack needs plausible liability. That's fair. I thought we now met up with now, No. Not up with Glenn. Okay. You can take a picture of it, Mr. Green. Yeah, I'll, I'll be happy to do that. At least get something. Yeah. To start looking at. And now, uh, what was what was that name you said? Nina, Nina Castle. Castle. Nina Castle. All right. 1950s. 1950s. Oh, you can Google her now. We got a sign. He Googles Nina Castle. ETU, 1950. All right. Uh, Mysterious disappearance. Uh, there's a. Uh, minus porn. <laughs> minus television show. <laughs> It's, uh, you, you find a small article in the student newspaper. Um, it's actually back then it was Southeast Texas Institute. Ooh. And not, uh, not, uh, what were they doing letting women? Short article talks about her burned body being found in the new basketball arena. So the roost was new back then. <laughs> and uh, officials ruled her death an accident, although they were very vague on the details. Well, I guess it wasn't a bus crash. Well, I guess not. <laughs> Here, I'll email that to you, Mr. Mac, uh, Mr. Mr. Green. Here you go. Thank you. Thank you very much. I also sent you the latest update on the possibility of a Babylon 5 remake. I thought you might be interested. You look like you, you might enjoy that. Thank you. Thanks. You're welcome. <laughs> we'll come in and see you Was it actually tomorrow. your porn link? <laughs> oh, no, I took the wrong way. <laughs> if you turn it on, Gmail has an undo send now. Hey, but it's only like three seconds. I have it it's, turned on. It's configurable. I've had it for a long time. Oh, you see, I had it up for years now, too. Yeah. yeah I've never I, cared. I saw the article, and I was like, what? I've used it, actually. I have, too. But you got to be quick. At least on mine, it's like, it waits like four seconds, and then... I think I thought that was configurable for like a minute. Maybe I it thought was. it was, too. I had mine for like ten seconds. Anyway. You play those. I have him bothered looking through at it, so... Jeff, you would uh, find the deer goggles function of Gmail quick and quick. Are you familiar with that? No. Basically, in order to send an email, if you turn this on, it asks you a simple arithmetic or algebra <laughs> question. You have to solve the algebra question in order to be able to click send on the email. Right. Yeah. <laughs> that sounds like one of their... Uh, 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 Name mistake. No, that too. No, that would be the government makes you do that. <laughs> one of their uh, April Fool's Day ideas. Yeah. Yeah. So that is like the briefest plot point story. there is. From the time in the pizza bar until now, that's a plot point. From the time in the pizza bar, pizza bar. After midterms. Oh, after midterms. Till now. Oh. That's a plot point. Okay. That's a pretty short one. That's cool. That's cool. Yeah. You did it pretty well. Yeah. Not bad. So. And now I have an extra smoke bomb that we can possibly that may, or may, might or may, or may or may not work. Okay. <laughs> well, maybe you should go test it and refine your skills. Yeah, we should probably make skills. more of them and store them at, like, Dr. Max. Uh, in Joe Diffie's car. <laughs> Joe Diffie's got plenty of smoke in his car. You know, I didn't realize that the dual major wasn't really that awesome. I'm like rethinking it now. Like, I don't know how useful. The whole school thing is for flavor. Yeah. And we're not playing a lot of that. Yeah, I'm, I'm curious if, if and how are uh, how to play it more. I guess I misinterpreted. I thought you would get two rolls at the bonus table, but I guess not. Oh, I see what you're saying. Maybe you should. I'll reread that tonight or tomorrow. It's not a big deal. 
it's not the game. So. Just, like, at, like the, what tool we got that we have an in with somebody in the staff, yeah. the faculty, like, how on earth will that come into play? You're going to have to write that in there somehow. Well, right no, if, if, it, if it, if it, yeah. I mean, you, you are the, I, I feel like you can come up with the contact and then do Yeah, you, you can That's come up true. with it if you want. I, I'm happy to let you guys. I would play it like we did the superhero thing. You create a contact, right? Yeah. Yeah. Then you, both, both Jeff and Adam got that. So I'm fine with you guys creating something there and I'll, I'll write that in at some point. Um, you seem to underestimate my laziness. <laughs> <laughs> I'm disappointed that Chris hasn't helped me because he, he was a journalist major, so he gave, that gave me a lot of easy ways to in, in, inject pop stuff. Yeah. yeah. But don't forget, yeah, I, mean, yeah, I can yeah, still do that with Glenn Mack. He's somebody who Jack hears Green. news. And, and also, you've got, I mean, some of us have jobs, right? Like, I, I yeah. think Edison is working as a, a assistant in the computer lab, and you have work study. I don't know what you're saying. They move me around quite a bit. His job is to turn the lights on and off the football field. But, hold on, okay. but you can turn that into, I mean, hooks to. Yeah. Oh no, no. Right. Too, yeah. 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 No, I need to get through this ball point tonight, and then um, I got to figure out what's next. Mm. So does that mean we're done? Yeah, early tonight. I'm a little disappointed. I thought it would take a little longer. But I don't think Joel minds. Joel is dying <laughs> over there. Joel's that, doing his Jeff impression. <laughs> that plot point was too short. <laughs> No, I was fine with it. I think it was good. Interesting. Yeah, but I would I, should, I I kept trying to figure out how to stretch it out a little better. And I just without getting into the nitty gritty of movement, it kinda Did you make up the whole jungle sounds thing? No, that's in there. Oh. I guess more It seems incongruous. Does it seem like it fits? I I will I will give you a hint. It's Dana Garza's cross. Okay. Dana Garza. So it's where it comes from. What the hell is my phone? Dana Garza? My phone is possessed. Do you see this? It's just flickering all over the place. Your button's stuck down or something. Yeah. All right, I've stopped yeah. the recording. Could be the busted ass. Uh,